right in, bro. Really, pilly. All right. Don't spill a beer this time. Yeah, I mean, dead. <laughs> Boom. Like Welcome back thing. to the Monolith Film Podcast. Joining us once again, the man, the myth, the legend. That guy there. Bonjour. Welcome. The laser. Thank you for having me. <laughs> the lizard, the laser. What a Mr. Mr. K. Mr. What Mr. a Mr. K is here. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what are we doing today, class? What are we doing? Poor things. Poor things by our, our uh, a fan of the show, an old timer. Our boy. Yorgos Lanthimos. Mm-hmm. We've done, uh, the favorite was out when we did him. Yeah, but we kind of messed up that episode. We should have broken them all up, I think. Yeah, we, we did like four in one shot. Yeah, we did a we did a Yorgos Lanthimos pod. Yeah. So this is a this is a return to Lanthimos mm-hmm. with his 2023 his latest release, Poor Things. He's got mm-hmm. a movie coming out this year already. Eh? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an anthology film. Oh really? Ah okay. uh, no. I like anthology. Yeah, I mean it's. Had the bone you put a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Well, have you but... seen Ballad of Buster Scruggs by the Cullen Brothers? Bro, what fun. the fuck yeah. did you just call me? <laughs> <laughs> what, bro? That was a fun one, though. I that was fun. That. Yeah. yeah. With Emma Stone again. Yeah, I guess he really likes her. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't his new one also supposed to be with her? That's what I just said. Oh. <laughs> does he, <laughs> does he <laughs> want to miss the first? <laughs> does he want to marry her? I don't know why. I don't know. Isn't she spoken for? I don't know. I don't keep up with that stuff. Spider Man, I think. No, the, the, <laughs> the fucking <Andrew Garfield. laughs> the movie. You know, does he want to marry her? Never oh, mind. I get it. Okay, poor things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was being quiet for the bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're being quiet for the bit. Poor things. I got I got two summaries written down. The first one is basically Frankenstein, but the monster is Emma Stone, and everyone wants to bang her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty close, yeah. I got a pretty good summary that I read online. Mm. Yeah, okay. It's Barbie, but for kid, for girls who listen to Bjork. Nice. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. The other the the, the actual summary I have is is uh, Godwin Baxter, played by Willem Dafoe, is a nutty scientist who brings back a dead girl, and raises her as his daughter, Bella Baxter, the daughter, played by Emma Stone, uh, runs away with some dude uh, to discover life, but mostly sex. Mm-hmm. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good. I would like the flip on a Frankenstein story where it's still the monster, but he just gets tons of pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to flip on it again. Yeah. The same yeah. thing. Didn't they make that? Did they? I won't watch. I don't it. think it's actually yeah. That, it's called Poor Things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, there's a there's a I think the most recent Frankenstein movie in it. Frankenstein is just like some hot dude with nice. like one scar on his face or something. Oh, like is it? Um, it's the one with Cole Sprouse, Dylan Sprouse. One of the Sweet Life on Deck kids. Is it? I th- yeah, is he's, it? he's the Frankenstein. And then there's this other girl, um, and she's the, the, the scientist. It's like weird science meets oh. Frankenstein. Are popular, you of, popular science for kids. There's also Lisa popular Frankenstein. Mechanics for kids. Are you talking about Lisa Frankenstein? Yes, that. Oh, okay, that's, that's not the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, that's not the one I'm talking about. Oh, Scar's Guard, is that it? Oh, is that the one? I don't know, but that's like an action. Isn't it? I don't know. I'm, I, is it like I Frankenstein? Oh, yeah. I Frankenstein yeah, yeah, yeah. with Aaron he's Eckhart. That, right? That's the yeah. Aaron Eckhart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good looking Frankenstein. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They don't, they but eat. it's like a, it's a Marvel. Uh, I, I Frankenstein yeah. by yeah. Isaac Asimov? Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. He, they don't, he doesn't look like a monster in it. He just looks mm. like a dude with a scar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, Robert Eggers... Yes. The dude who did mm-hmm. The Witch. The real goat of cinema right now. He's He was supposed to remake Nosferatu. That's is, not happening. Is he not? He, it's still in the wor- works. No, wait. I'm, I'm mixing two people up. He is. That yeah, is his next movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, I think Guillermo del Toro who's is doing Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. on the R there, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that what they pronounce his name? It's kind of like when... It's kind of like when... That's hot as fuck, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. It's kind of like when Timothy Chalamet starts speaking in French. Alors oui, alors mon personnage, Paul Atreides. <laughs> <laughs> or when he's like, no, actually, my, my name is pronounced Timothy. <laughs> Timothy. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. So what do you guys think of four things? First impressions? Well, we, also, we, oh, we yeah? left out of the synopsis there. Is that the whole point of the movie? Is that uh, the the girl that Godwin Baxter resurrected was pregnant with a kid, mm. and he implanted the brain of the dead baby into mm. the adult yes. version. Hence, why she is how she is at the beginning of the movie. Yes, and, and progresses grows. very fast into this right. like adult yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why she's horny too all the time. She got like a woman's body. Well, because she got she like she got brain. into like puberty at yeah. one point. Well, know? I think that too. I think it's mm-hmm. it's like her her 
her uh, development has accelerated. Mm-hmm. Right? So, yes. yeah, yeah. But she's still so her brain like, grows like two times a day, you know? Right. Yeah, but she would still have like all the adult hormones. Yeah. 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 And just a horny brain. Yeah. You're good yeah. to go. Yeah. That makes sense. I liked it. Yeah. A lot. How many times did you guys watch it? Just once. two. Yeah. Once. Once. I once. once. Yeah. yeah. I did one in a skim. I also liked it. Yeah. A lot. I watched it the first time I watched I did the VIP the first time I watched it. Oh, you saw it in the theaters? Yeah. Ooh. In, uh, around Christmas. At, yeah. the, at the Colossus? Forum. Forum. The forum. Okay. Yeah. VIP. I had to uh, order a pitcher of beer to my, to my seat. And you must have felt so good when that happened. Toasted, dude. It, was awesome. <laughs> it was sick. Best one of my best movie experiences. It was You're so alone awesome. with a picture of beer. No, no, I was I was with my whole family. Oh, okay. Like, we, like, we had we had beers before the movie, and yeah. then the second I sat down, and I ordered a picture to my to my seat. Just for awesome. you. Yep. Yeah. It was Just awesome. Drank it out of the picture. It was, <laughs> that was fucking funny. No, I'm enjoying stuff. the movie. <laughs> You're staring like this. Just fucking beer everywhere. Uh, no, but I, I really liked it. Yeah. I think. Um, mm. First viewing, instantly my favorite Lanthimos movie. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, mm. it's his best in a while. Second viewing, I think it, I think it, it bumped down a bit. Ooh. What do you prefer more, Dog Tooth? Uh, Dog Tooth. Yeah, yeah. Dog, Dog Tooth is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Dog Tooth rules. I think yeah. Dog Tooth is my yeah. favorite. Dog Tooth rules. Is this your first time seeing Lanthimos, or have you seen Lanthimos? Before? No, I've seen Killing of a Sacred Deer. Mm-hmm. I've seen um, the favorite. Yeah, and this is my third. Awesome. Yeah. We watched. You see Dog Tooth? I did not see Lobster. 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 I did not see Lobster. Lobster is good. Yeah. Lobster. Dog Tooth is like his least accessible. It's fucking, it's a weird movie. Greek. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's, it's not so, in English either. Yeah. Full Greek. Yeah. Full Greek. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Lo- Lobster is probably the closest to this movie, I think. I yeah. Think it's Similar favorite themes. Favorite yeah. Mushed together. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know what you mean. I felt that too. I, I also felt like um, Favorite was a more like straightforward story. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as weird as his movies usually are. Yeah. But technically, Mm-hmm. I feel like everything he was trying in the favorite, he he dialed in on this one. Yeah, this is a finished product. Yeah, probably that is. Yep. It's cool to see too, like from dog tooth to here, like it, it's almost a one eighty flip on style. Oh yeah, yes. art. Like, it's yeah. completely different than what he was doing before. Yeah. Oh yeah, big time, big time, big time, pacing big time. and stuff. Yeah, I wanted to start by talking about the the sets. Mm-hmm. They're all built to scale. Yeah. 3D really? sets. Yep. That, like the, the Lisbon set yeah. is a, is it's a, a small city. It's a physical thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when Same they, with the boat. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, Like when they walk from room to room, like it's not mm. one set to the other. Like it's one giant set. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. the boat too, like for the skies they had, you know, like mm. those majestic purple blue skies? Yeah. Uh, that was like an LED screen they had. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, they, they, like Dune. Yeah. Like one of those screen rooms, that new Yes, new yes, technology. yes, yeah. yes. Mm. What are they, what's that? There's a name for that. Oh, sure, they did a Star Screen Wars X. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say? They did that in Star Wars too for the fucking. Yeah. Uh, it's an old, tree, it's an yeah. old thing, but then it, they mm. got, it brought it got it's brought back. Because the TVs got better, exactly. so they were like, "Oh, yeah. well, we can bring this back." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I, awesome. I like the sets a lot. I like the physical sets a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, such a like a like a with the well, lack of better way of better describing like a Willy Wonka sense of surrealism mm. to them. Mm-hmm. Yes, that I really like. It's very Susian, I found. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. It's very Susian. Yeah. Feels very AI generated. Interesting. Yes. Yes, like the early like two three years ago. Yes. During COVID. Mm. Yes. Where it all started with yeah, yes. Feels, the 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 sets and the movie yeah. style yeah. feels very like I, it's not AI generated. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. But like, it feels AI generated. Like it looks like if it as if an AI would generated it mm. in the best way possible. Right. Because mm. it's it's like. Un- it's it, uncanny. It's very uncanny. uncanny. It's very uncanny. Mm-hmm. Well, even the way the way so the way all the characters are kind of very like the way they live in this space and the way the space is the whole thing is uncanny. Not just the the sets. I found the uh, Godwin Baxter, uh, Bella Baxter, like all those characters. They're not. They don't feel like real people. They feel yeah. more. Well, um, Mike McCandle felt real. But I mean, that's very Lanthimos. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you look at Killing of a Sacred Deer. Right. All those characters are like flat. Yeah, you're, you're not supposed to have a connection with these. Yeah, no, no. it's like well, it's a weird. The acting, his directing, has changed in terms of acting because mm-hmm. in Lobster and uh, Killing specifically, the acting is super deadpan. Yeah, just dry. Yeah, but it it, it just adds to that uncanny yeah. element of his film. Yeah. And now I feel like again something he tried in the favorite 
was mm-hmm. giving the characters more personality, but mm-hmm. keeping that uncanny element. I feel like he's really dialing into it. Yeah, yeah. but the uncanny part comes from a lot more than just the acting, I find. Yeah. Yeah, of The course. sets, yeah, the yeah, feel yeah, yeah. of the movie. Yeah. The music is mm-hmm. very uncanny. Oh, the music yeah. is funny. Well, it's very right. diminished. It's That's my like favorite. Yeah. I think that was my favorite part of the movie was the music. That's how I got into the movie immediately. Same. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, the sets are really cool. Uh, set design is a super important part of this, especially the whole, I didn't know this, the whole, um, it's a mini city. Yeah. I thought it was all green screen or just small no, sets. No, no, they, they built the, f- the whole thing. Yeah. On, that, on that, I think side. that really helps with that whole like living within the space and getting yes. to know your characters and the world they live yes. in. But that music, those first few notes there at the beginning, I'm like, okay. Well, they, they're playing diminished chords there. So right. it's like an yeah. augmented. Uh... Exactly. So it just feels like you're you're not you're on Earth, but you're not. It's weird. It's mm-hmm. weird. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Love like, it. I mean, I, that that first that first music. Yeah. Key. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it's supposed to be her on the piano, right? She's like playing with her hands and feet and stuff. But like the just that that sound. The second I started watching it today, both my dogs started freaking out. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just just from that first just those mm-hmm. first few notes, they were mm-hmm. like, "What the hell's going on over here?" Yeah, but your dogs are also kind of like dumb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's cool that like, like the the music was so effective that right. even yeah. animals who don't even watch TV were like, "Hey, yeah. whoa, what's this?" This is off. Yeah. Uh, another thing that lends to the uncanniness is that I was watching interviews last night about the movie. Was so they really wanted to have like the the ideas and themes of the movie to transcend time periods, even though it's like a very Victorian looking movie. Mm. Yeah. But the the way they did it is very weird. Like it's like you know like especially in the costume design. They had it so, like, you know, like, there'd be moments where Bella Baxter's wearing, like, the puffy shoulder stuff, but she's wearing, like, a mini skirt. Yeah. And then, like, le- plastic leather heels, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's very weird. Like, it's very, like, a combination, like, like, what do you call it? Um, there's, a, there's a word for it. Uh, I forgot what the word but is, but, like, even with the sets, when they're in Lisbon, you know, she's Lisbon, it's all this, like, really Susian uncanny set, mm-hmm. and you see this little fucking sky trams yeah. mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know? It's very weird. It reminded me a lot of like a, a lo-fi fifth element. Okay, yeah. Sure. Mm. With the costumes and the sets. Or mm-hmm. if you or if you put fifth element into an AI generator and said made it a cyberpunk movie. Kind of. Yeah. Some weird thing like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. You guys ever see fucking, I forget the name of the fucking movie. I think it was on like YTV or something. It was called like Captain something, Sky Captain, some shit like that. Sky High? <laughs> no, it was some <laughs> stupid long title with that. Oh, star, okay, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Something like with that. With Jude Law. Yes, with Jude Law. It's it's a pretty underrated movie. It's kind of like in the same vein as The Rocketeer from Disney from the 90s. So it's these sure. two movies that basically kind of... I know exactly what you're talking about. You know what I'm about. talking about, though? I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And I will... I, oh, yeah. So it's... In if the, there's one person that would know what you're talking about, it's Lots. So, <laughs> so it's a movie, basically, that, that takes place in about the 20s, 30s... Um, yeah, twenty thirty is like, hey, hit the bricks, see, yeah. and it's, and it's like the narrators like that, and it's about, and it's all painted in such, it's like the cinematography of it is very brown, yellowish like tones, and it's basically just about this this hero of uh, World War One and Two, and you know he he tries to defeat. From my recollection, he's just a, a pilot, and he tries to defeat like the bad guys, yeah. and the world of tomorrow is like, oh, the retro, it's retro futuristic, mm-hmm. okay, it's yeah. very retro futuristic, yeah. complete flop. At the box office, yeah, yeah, yeah. just critically, mm-hmm. but you know, I remember, I remember watching this because I remember renting this because I thought, oh, the cover's cool, but it's, it's, yeah, it's very retro futurist, um, Art Deco, Art, very Art Deco. This movie feels very Art Deco, very yeah, Art Deco, yeah. but this is Art Deco, but very Baroque as well. Yes, yes, yes. I, I was not, I, yeah. Art Deco was the second movement that I found that I thought of, like on the one, boat. Like I found the boat very Art Deco. The first you know? one I, I thought immediately yeah. was mm-hmm. yeah, the Paris is very yeah. Baroque. Yeah, the thing. The yeah, for me it was very yeah. Baroque. Yeah. But yes, Sky mm-hmm. Captain and the World of Tomorrow with Jude Law. It's not bad. It's not bad. Mm. It's, not, it's not the best thing I've watched. I don't know. The thing I was remembering <laughs> more about it was like, uh, it, it also I think had these kind of. I don't know. How, I, they were must have been like CGI skies and stuff. Oh, okay. oh, the blimps. Yeah, and it's Those a lot blimps. of blimps and stuff. Fuck, you're just, you're just, I'm just. <laughs> <blooded>. <laughs> memories. So many memories of this right now. This movie reminded right. me of Dino Riders. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? You don't know, Di- bro. Dino Riders is the coolest shit ever, dude. <laughs> Dino Riders was this cartoon, bro. It, had the, it was the coolest toy. If you had a Dino Riders toy, bro, it's the craziest shit, bro. It's like this movie from the '80s. There's people that go back in time, and the dinosaurs, they got guns on them, bro. 
<laughs> it was like sci-fi dinosaurs, bro. It was the coolest fucking thing ever, dude. Wait, how does this movie remind you? Oh, of it's that? a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Dino Riders is fucking awesome, yeah. bro. Like there was like a T Rex, like two like laser cannons here, two laser cannons on the. Oh, fucking yeah. awesome, bro. Cool. Eighties play. Sounds bro. good. Yeah. Dude, sounds good I, I think retro futurism was the right word yeah. for it. Retro well. futurism. Oh, yeah. But I think, but yes, yeah, see, so retro futurism for four things, yes. But again, to your point with the whole costume design thing, yeah, the timeless. It, it, the movie is timeless in a sense that I don't really, I can't really pinpoint. I mean, I can, I can think of. It, it was hard to pinpoint the time period a yes. little bit, but like you could tell, it's like clearly of some some Victorian. Yeah, right. I mean the the book is set in Victorian. Yeah, yeah, but it's like it felt weird. Like it felt like you there was elements that was like. Most of it like felt very Victorian, but then there's like something really like, oh okay, okay, very contradicting, you know. Yeah. I don't know if that even matters now, really though. No, it's, it's a like good thing. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I mean, I I don't. Yeah, movies that are time, like you can put a timestamp. I don't mind it. Just mm. make it good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I think I think all of this is done on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. So, it is. So that that's we can't exactly. Yeah. It's just it. an idea of a yeah. time period. That, that's that's exactly that's exactly it. Yeah. You know, that's exactly it. Mm. Yeah. But the music, I mean, you, we were talking, we were outside before the pod, a little pre-show chat, we were talking about Annihilation, and you said the music in that was like something you had never heard before. Music for me, yeah, that, that, <coughs> me, me, yeah. me, like I was just coming off of the high, like we said in the little talk, yeah. I was coming off of the high of Stranger Things, so, you know, Michael Stein, Kyle Dixon was like, oh, that's pretty cool, and then, fuck, what's his name, Ben something, yeah. does this, does the, uh, the, Ben the, Kingsley, yeah, yeah, Gandhi himself. <laughs> does uh, does this does the score for uh, Annihilation? My boy Mahan. And when I was watching that, I was like, "Whoa, this is." That's when you can tell. That's when, and I think this is where back to the previous episode with you guys, when you guys were saying like how annoyed you were with Dune mm. of like the. Yeah. Okay, oh that. So I see where you're coming from. But again, those are also like in the first movie weird stuff. But here, I like. Th- they chose properly when to use the same yeah. notes you know what i well, mean yeah. there's clearly a, a, a certain moment that's like consistently the same type of moment in that yeah. movie where they use that song you know yeah exactly yeah I mean, but the, the my reaction to this movie was the same with the, with the music I, this is something i've never heard before mm. this is so cool it's so fun it's yeah. fun it's so creative and i feel like lanthimos has grown to be grown has become more of a director i think who's going to dip his toes more into play into kind of like not quirky not like Wes Anderson because Wes Anderson is very clinical sterile there's a method yeah. to the madness but I feel Lanthi most I don't think there's much of a method I really don't like acting wise yes um, I think oh dude there's so bro did you see the shots in this movie no no the method mm. in the sense that like you know how you know how you can recognize a shot from Wes Anderson immediately yeah Lanthi most not as much I find Maybe this is my experience. It's for sure. parameters. Though. But like there are parameters yeah. that he sets. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry. Fisheye effects in a big budget movie with Emma Stone? So sad. That's... Oh, that's yeah. Give me more of this. Give me more yeah. of weird... Use different cameras for your movie. Good thing we got a fisheye lens for the podcast. Well, there you go. Well, Lanthimos. 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 Yeah, Boom. Yeah. But the idea of getting creative with yeah. your yeah. filmmaking, with your equipment, mm-hmm. that's awesome. That's so much more... Um, engaging. Yeah. In in the in the, I'm not gonna watch Family Guy while I'm watching Porf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There, there's a lot of cool shit they do. With it's the so much fun. A yeah. lot a lot of really wide. Yeah. Yes. This, this is the evolution from the favorite though. Exactly. They had a yes. few, exactly. and they, they didn't go far enough. Yeah. This one, is the proper point. one thing they did in this movie that I don't know if they did it intentionally, but a lot of movies been doing it. I fucking hate it. Mm. Is there's a lot of things where it's like. Let's say we're something on the same plane, like the same foreground, but whatever's in the middle is super focused. And then whatever's on the side is like super blurry, Mm -hmm. but feathered out in a way that pisses me off. Do you know what that is? Oh, yeah. It's like the focal point. Yeah. 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 What? Like the way the light behind it shapes. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but it's like, it's like I've been watching a lot of movies now where it was even in Talk to Me. Yes. Yes, it was. It was in Talk to Me. So when, so for example, when, um, she was tripping out. She was seeing like her mom or her dad dying. Mm-hmm. It it's weird how it's like it's it's 
badly faded. It's it's badly like blurred out. It's a blurred vignette. It yes, Instead yes. Of, okay. But yeah. it's not yeah. black or white. It's just blurred. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hate it. Like, but yeah. the thing That's is, they're true. on this. They're on the same plane. They're both in the foreground. They should both be in focus. In my oh, okay. Yeah. But it's like always this thing where it's like the hand over here is like I'll show you after. I'm like, yeah. oh, you're on the movie. But there, this movie does that. Yes. Oh, really? Joe, you don't bananas, think bananas, dude? No, but really? this is that yes. like the focal length on this is so shallow. Yeah. Like yeah. you. Can I know. I know it's super shallow, but I just don't like it. Like I just yeah. don't. Like I appreciate the shallow focal length, but it's like mm. it felt like a lot. A lot of things were just blurry for no reason. Yeah, I think it was more to like. I'm gonna show you the filmmaking of it because you're going from such a style like to 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 to, to present the camera a bit. Yeah. Okay. Like show himself mm. like. Like, you, you know it's not real. It's not like a, a yeah, hard I guess match so. cut where the, you know, you're changing 15%. I guess so. Point. I mean, but they do a lot of other stuff to do that. They do the mm-hmm. fisheye. They yeah, have, like, the little spin, the spinny blur in the back. You know, yeah, where it's, so like, that's the, the guy's in yeah. focus and everything's in the circle behind. Yeah, I love I that. Know. Okay, yeah. So that's not, okay. Good. That's so not I what I'm talking like about. No. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's one scene in, per- in particular exactly that. It's Emma Stone. It's still black and white. And it's just her contemplating something. And the background is like it's leaves like, or something. It's like it's this Uzumaki mm-hmm. shit, you yeah, know? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But it's more just like this blurriness of all these objects in the foreground. Mm-hmm. Just be bananas. A lot of movies have been doing it, but I feel like it's like a, a digital blur almost. Really? Okay. It's what it feels like. I think, yeah. I it's, think it's just it's feathered just, out. You gotta show me after. I'll show you after, yeah. yeah. I think I think he's he's even when he's not using a fisheye, I think mm-hmm. he's still using quite a wide lens. They're super wide. Oh, no, even even yeah. for this, like mid This movie's insanely yeah. wide. Yeah. Insanely wide lens. Yeah. That, that too, I, it reminded me a lot of Barry Lyndon, the way it was shot like that. Oh, yeah? Oh, they're, really? They're, they're, like, styled, and it has the same, See, I was like, reminded, focus. I remind more of Barry Lyndon mm-hmm. Barry favorite. Like, that too, but I'm thinking more style. Okay. Like, you're saying, like, kind of, like, like, painting. Yeah, well, Barry Lyndon, it's mm-hmm. always, like, super tight, and then a zoom out to, like, 500 fucking hills, super zoom out, yeah. and then hard cut to, like, a tight close-up. With the same kind of round bulk mm. behind them, mm. then back to a super wide. But like you're, you're not supposed to feel real. It's supposed to be each a painting. Yeah. Set up like yeah. this. This is the same thing here. I find you. You're not supposed to be in the world. You're supposed to appreciate each shot. Sure. Yes. Okay. As its own like thing. Another thing too that I liked about the the filmmaking mm. about this movie is that like, it felt very like you're looking at it through her eyes, mm-hmm. through this like distorted, child like memory. You know, because like, let's say like you, you try to remember your memories from your child, right? Mm-hmm. They're all surreal like that. They all oh, kind of yeah. like the look. It's kind of uncanny. Yeah. It's like it like in your dreams too. It like kind of looks like There's that. There's a certain mm-hmm. glow and a saturation. Glow to it saturation, too. but yeah. also like a distortion of like an exaggeration right. mm-hmm. of things that like your memory has a bias to. You know, mm. and I like that. And with the fisheye, it really kind of focuses on yeah. that on her. Especially the one where the fisheye is where it's all blacked out around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like real skater part kind yeah. of thing. It's very like, okay, we're watching this through her. Yeah. You know? Well, that, that's like such good use of the tool. Oh, dude, such good use. Rather than just like, okay, here's super wide and now you can see everything. You're like shooting around. Well, it's not just that, but it's also, it's, there, it's also like, a, it's like, it's not just using it because it's cool. It's mm-hmm. using it for a reason and a purpose, you know? Well, full single out iris, full. Yeah, that's yeah, the subject. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But just the way it was executed. Was yeah, on a, very good. a different level than like a skater video or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it yeah, would, yeah, it's it's properly set for a reason. Yeah, I don't know if it's on the same level as a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty good. I mean, That's you set you it gotta for do. a reason. You start blacking out the edges somehow. I mean, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what we do. We uh we have it so that like uh instead of blacking out the edges, the background is like a skater part. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, hi. Hello. But yeah, I, I like that a lot. I like mm. that filming, filmmaking a lot. It's very engaging, very different all the time. Yeah. One yeah. thing I want to go back to the music for a second. Then I think the difference between like this kind of uh, like uh, I what it's called, but this kind of little score repeating itself over and over again, mm. like the little theme that always plays. Like in Dune with the screaming, it's the same thing. It doesn't change through it. But this, yes. the melody like evolves. Yeah. Like uh, she's getting smarter. We're getting more notes in between. Yeah. So it feels different, but it's mm. the same. Another thing too that's really yeah. cool is that when she's getting smarter, the the less surreal it kind of filmmaking mm-hmm. kind of yeah. is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, I mean, on the point that you calling it a theme mm-hmm. it is exactly what it is. I mean, it, it's like the difference between like listening to an album that just sounds like one song over and over again, yeah, and then like listening to Pink Floyd's 
the wall, mm -hmm. right? That there's that one riff that that's in almost refrain. every yeah, it's that's in almost refrain. all of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. But every time you hear it, it's a little different. It's in a different mm -hmm. setting. You're it's, moving forward. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. a word for that in music. Yeah. I forget what it is. I think it's refrain. Refrain. I think so. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the music also reminded me a lot of this uh, classical guy I listened to mm -hmm. called Michael Pissarro. Okay. He's an avant-garde <laughs> minimalist classical pl cool. like, piano yeah. guy, like Eric Satie. I don't know who that is. Okay. But he has this album called uh, A Mist is a Collection of Points. Cool. And it sounds just like the... Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's less like... Because this album, like I mean, the movie had like a lot of um, diminished fifth in it, mm -hmm. you know? There's less of that in the music, but you kind of hear it. It's kind of the same thing. And there's a lot more reverb, you know? Cool. But yeah, though, I like the, I like the soundtrack in this too. It's, it's very weird, very off-putting. Fire. Yeah. Especially yeah. when they're during that scene where she's dancing and there's like a da -dum, da -dum. That's my favorite scene in the movie, I think. Oh, really? That's so sick. Yeah, spoilers, dude. That's, oh, not my favorite shot. Oh, okay, But okay, scene-wise, okay. <laughs> <But laughs> it's so dynamic <laughs> with the long hair. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's it's such a it weird dead. dance. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. I actually, I, 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 I took notes during that, too, because the it's at such a pivotal point in the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the choreography is like a, a complete reflection of her personal development in that moment. Yeah. Like, it's all about her starts like this. fighting for freedom yeah. and him trying to control her. Yes. And her constantly breaking free and mm -hmm. trying to learn how to dance, learn yeah. how to live. Yeah. So that was very, very cool. Like very well timed, very placed. Dancing on film, it's like, they go so well together. Yeah. Any dancing movie or any scene where there's some kind of dance in it, it it's always feels right. Like, bro, I love Step Up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen, I, I think I've, I've spoken about this before, but uh, Gaspar Noé's uh, Climax. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. It's about... We were supposed to review that, too. It's about a dance troupe who mm -hmm. they're having, like, their rap party and someone spikes the punch with acid. Okay. Yeah. The whole movie is just a choreographed dance. It's insane. It's great. It's really, really yeah. cool. I think But that's, like, pretty much the only thing. Cool about it? Yeah. I, okay. I, I was a little disappointed. Yeah. But... In terms of that one aspect, yeah. super cool. And it's like one, it's almost like the whole movie's one consistent shot, just the camera and following different people okay. during their trip. Yeah. You know, it'd be a very cool concept, very sick idea that I don't think anyone's ever done. That, but it's a jazz drum solo. <laughs> Delete it! Oh, oh dude, what? that's proprietary, man. <laughs> Play along. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Gaspar, I find like. He's more, his concepts are good, but the, the execution mm -hmm. of the story is... Mm -hmm. yeah. Irreversible is flawless to me. Okay. I fucking love that movie. Oh, yeah. Irreversible is insane. It's so good. It's a top tier movie. It's an it's an S, top five horror movie of all time. It's fu it's so fucking good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I agree with what you're saying with mm -hmm. all his other movies. Yeah. But no, Irreversible no. is fucking yeah. flawless. It's so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it it's, is it's, so yeah. effective. It, everything about that movie works so fucking well. I find... Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? No, no. It's so fucking good. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch a reverse. We do it on pod. You know how we were harping yeah, on him for not watching Martyrs? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, if you haven't watched a reverse, what the fuck? You're a horror movie. We're well, gonna watch it then. <laughs> but, but back to poor things. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys think about the uh, credits, opening credits, closing credits? I love them. Yeah, the, the, the oh, yeah. credits are on the front oh, yeah. with like, it's just like a nice little painting. Yeah. So I, sick. I guess it reminds me of what you said a Transitions while back. Too? Yeah, between the each chapter, chapter, yeah, yeah. chapters yeah. are great. Love it, cool. so surreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it reminds me of what you said um, a while back there, where you hate. Oh, I I got a question for you then. I know you hate when people put like music on at the end of credits, or like they don't like everyone leaves. Sorry, like everyone leaves at the end of credits. Again, like I get. I'm assuming you appreciated the fact that like it was all there beforehand. But what like is your opinion? Do you think the credits should be arts like artsy? Oh yeah, yeah. It should be part of it. Yeah. I don't think I don't think the credits need to be anything mm. other than a list of names. To be honest, but yeah. you can elevate. you can sure. Yeah. I'm gonna watch them either way. I think everyone should watch them either way because a lot of people put work into this movie, and I like looking well, at their names. Yeah. 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 I prefer if it was styled up though, rather than a little bit. Just a little. It's gonna be super really styled up, you know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, back to climax. I love that movie. Opens with the end scroll. Mm -hmm. it was just scrolling credits yeah and then halfway through you get the title card and then at the end you get the opening credits that's cool I, I love that I think mm -hmm. that's sick because then you're actually forcing everyone to sit through the scroll and it's not it's not like a crazy stylized scroll it's like mm -hmm. you start the movie and you're like wait a minute mm -hmm. did I fast forward by accident mm -hmm. like it's actually just a that's an old school way to do it though. I love it yeah. I think that's really well cool. you know what else you know what other movie did that is Monty Python on the quest for a holy grail mm-hmm 
They did. They did a few. That was like, that was like a joke. That was a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they all get arrested. No, no. no at, the be- at the beginning of Monty Python and the Quest for the World, there's like the the scrolling credits in the beginning. Oh yeah. Like a Norwegian, and then. Flash but it, it, yeah, yeah. it starts. Yeah, it's like flashing lights. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's it goes from English to like weird Norwegian. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> and then it's like and then it keeps, like. The, the, the word moose keeps getting put into yeah, like people's names yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's like now it's just getting too much moose so then they stop the guys and be like oh, okay we fired the guy that's doing the moose shit yeah like, sorry, it's, some, a moose got onto the prompt machine or whatever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. they start going credits again and it doesn't work yeah I remember that now <laughs> then they get arrested yeah. at the end that was the fucking best ending yeah. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, I, like, I like the credits of this this was mm-hmm. fun it was me cool. too yeah. yeah I think but I think after after those framed paintings it does mm-hmm. just end with a scroll yeah. right yeah yeah I, I watched them in the theaters. I didn't watch the yeah. credits this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the main, the main credits yeah. are the, yeah. the painting was there. I found those opening credits. I don't know if they were would have been there if the beginning of the movie wouldn't have been like thirty minutes of black and white. Mm-hmm. I think you got to kind of prompt the audience, even with that opening like three shots. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see how they're like, we got to show that it's color. We can't just show everyone it's black and white. You know, mm-hmm. for a twenty twenty four audience. Yeah, I guess you're gonna go. We'll start with a little color just to yeah. go. Don't worry, it's in color. I like I like the cut. From black and white to color, with yeah. uh, what's his name? What's the what's the the doctor's name? Duncan Dun- Winterburn. No, that's that's the lawyer. What's oh, Mike McDaniel. No, the Mike McCandle. Uh, yes, Mike McC- Max? 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 Max 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 McCandle. Yes, Max, Max McCandle is like I just hope she's okay, and then it hard cuts to her her tits while she's riding the guy in color. <laughs> I like that. I think it was cool, but I I also think the opposite of what you just said. Mm-hmm. Having all the black and white, yeah, and then him say, "I just hope she's okay." And mm-hmm. then you have the opening credits, and then the title card, and then it's her getting fired. Mm. I think that would have been pretty cool. Too. Yeah, would have been cool, but I think for like, like uh, that scene at the beginning, if they delete that, yeah. get rid of it, start like yeah. normal, like her, that. her jumping, yeah. in color, Those first few. Yeah, I think that was there just for the yeah today's audience. Really, I think so. Yeah, just to be like, it's okay, you know, stay in your seats. You don't have to fucking be. You know, bored yeah. with the black and white fucking thing. You can watch something. See, I don't get this whole, I'm bored with black and white. Mm-hmm. I, I, it, I think it turns a lot of people off. It though. does, for yeah. sure. I love it. I don't have no problem with it at all. Yeah, because people are stupid. So yeah, easy. Mm-hmm. Black and white. But I, I think, I think that specifically, to me, was more of like, here's what happened in the real world, mm-hmm. color, and now, and now here's Frank the beginning of my movie. Yeah. It's not in color because it's not the world. It's, it's yeah. But I mean, you know, we get that. Bubble. We get that. The scene bubble again is black and white. Later. Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, I think this has fun because the difference with um, what's uh, my gosh, Oppenheimer and this it's the opposite. So Oppenheimer, what was black and white is factual, and what's in color was not subjective. Subjective. Yeah. Well, factual. It's more like uh, the black and white's what like when her when she was being imprisoned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when she goes to see the real world and experience stuff, it's color, you know? But it's more like, yes, but the way, because the, the way Lee explained it was, is as if, you know, the the bubble, it's like the bubble of this is the world that doesn't exist, that's completely fictional, and that's just like, this is like the made-up world of like Godwin Baxter and Bella Baxter, and then when they go out, it's like, oh, a whole new world. Whereas I find like in Oppenheimer, it's like it's different, right? It's like mm. this whole Yeah, world. yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. But I don't think, I don't think in this movie it's a, it's the same idea, but it's not like a subjective thing. No. It's more just like, oh, it's like black and white, but like, well, with black it, and white is like inside, outside. Well, I think it, it kind of does play into subjectivity as well, because it's almost like what's black and white is Godwin's world, and what's color is, is the real Bella's world. world. Yeah. Right, that's why it's oversaturated, that's mm. why it's glowing, because she's experienced everything for the first time, yeah. it's magic to her. I think it's more her perspective. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And I, I think um, that switch... From from black and white, I like it. I missed it the first time in theaters. I went to the I had to go to the bathroom because I had just drank like a liter of beer. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So I had to go to the bathroom, and I came back, and everything was in color. I was like, oh fuck, I missed. I was look. I knew there was maybe a transition because I had seen <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. clips in color, so I knew the movie yeah. was in color. So I knew the transition mm-hmm. was coming, and I missed it, and I was bummed. So watching it this time around and being able to see that transition. What do you guys think about her suicide in the beginning? being in color then it goes to transition to black and white well, that's, that's what yeah, Nick was just, just saying audience. okay yeah. I was just for the audience okay yeah. I, I understand I liked it I liked I did, it yeah I didn't mind it I liked it I think it was a it was a nice um 
emotional drop as well. Mm-hmm. Right, you're watching someone kill themselves, and then now everything's in black and white. Yeah, it yeah. sets the tone yeah. hard right away. Yeah, yeah. But see, that's the thing is, I find like the tone of this movie, for as much as I really enjoyed it, it's all over the place. I thought it was hilarious. I, no, very yeah, funny. It's very funny. But that's the thing; it's very, very funny. But like you said, I'm just witnessing someone kill themselves. Yeah. Right. So there's, I mean, of course, I've seen worse on, on, on as a movie like of someone killing themselves. I've seen it done worse. But like, that's such a that's such a, um, it's such a buzzkill. Mm. Well, I, I think I think the thing is that the suicide in this movie is not supposed to be the important part. No, it's mm-hmm. not. But it's it's also like you have to look at it. I think poor things because poor things gets a lot of praise. But if you look online, there's a lot of stuff that people don't like about this movie, and a lot of it is this, and we can get into it if we want. The whole idea of oh, why is why is the only way that these characters are celebrated? Is when it's just this sexed up, hypersexualized nymphomaniac girl. Oh, we're gonna get into it, bro. Right. We will get into it. Let's get into it. Get into it. Get but into it. let's, because I think okay. I think this could be a good segue. Because again, it's this. I fi- I mean, I loved it. I really did enjoy the movie. But when you look at it like that, you kind of understand. Okay. The suicide. You're romant. Not you're not romanticizing suicide. They're not doing that. You're fetishizing. You're fetishizing it through the eyes thing. of Bella Baxter. Like the actress is Emma Stone. Again, it's it's not, it's not ugly. Yeah. You know, it's a pretty girl committing suicide, and then this old, godlike per- First of all, Godwin. Yeah, well, they call him God the entire time. Yeah, thing. exactly. So it's, yeah. it's this whole... Right, it's this whole idea of the not just fetishizing suicide and death and life, but I think it's just fetishizing the idea of power dynamics within... Well, yeah, go. Yeah, no, ex- yeah, yeah, just like the idea of like fetishizing power dynamics... In the space when it's just like men and then gr- one girl, or one yeah. woman. So, so sure. and, you go first. I was, I was, and that's that's the main problem I have with this movie as mm. well. It's the one thing that I really don't like, is that by the end of it, it kind of feels like the movie is saying the only way for a woman to achieve independence is through sexuality or intelligence, right? Which is kind of a dangerous message, I find. I find it more like you're kind of, you know, you can have these societal norms put on you, but you still have to have some kind of yourself in it, you know? Yeah. She's, she's going through it without these impositions on her. My whole thing with this movie is that I don't feel like there's this big concept. Well, there is a super concept movie, but I'm saying it's like, I don't think they're trying to have a specific message. No. I think the, yeah, point, no is, message. the yeah. point of this movie is just to... It's almost like their method of pointing out ironies. I don't know. I, I think the message in society, like, yeah, like these things are made up and like yeah, it's like right. it's like it's yeah. just like society, ironic things in society, kind of you know like and it's the dynamic between men and women, the how insanely ironic it is, you know, and it's yeah. like the, they're they're using Bella Baxter as a vehicle to provoke this message in the people around her, yeah. you know. I mean, you look at. You look at, I, I feel like all of Lanthimos' movies don't have a message. They're just all about interpersonal dynamics. Yeah. Right? I mean, he, yeah. he, he obviously has issues with his parents and yeah. issues with relationships. Yeah. All of his movies are about sex and mm. the relationship between a, a, a parent and a child. Yeah. I mean, Dogtooth is a complete perversion of a father figure's authority. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. The lobster is a complete deconstruction of of how to start and how to engage in relationships. The killing of a sacred deer is entirely about the destruction again of the family unit, mm-hmm. and the favorite is all again about this boiled down fabrication of love. Mm-hmm. And in poor things, we get that all over again kind of all at once mm-hmm. dialed to 11. I didn't see too much of love in it. I, w- I was picturing yeah. more like all the men in the movie and all the other people in the movie are like the structures that are in place and she's just the raw human nature. Yes, that's exactly how I that's, that's, Yeah, that's a great point. And, and it's <laughs> pointing out the ironies. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, because that's the thing. It's like, for example, the when she goes to the brothel and the character, I don't remember her name, but the, the mother, the, not the mother, but yeah, the lady, Swiney. the mistress. Miss Swiney. Miss Swiney. Swiney. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, this is how the world works. 
And she's like, what the fuck? This is how the world works? I guess. You know, it's it's a mix of, again, ironies, but it's also kind of like this idea of, well, I don't really know much else. Might as well try this for a while. Yeah. And I think it's, like, a lot of a lot of its critics are saying, like, oh, she's just some sexed up girl. It's like, mm, not really. It, it's more like she's been forced and she's been told that this is how people do things. But she's been taking, she's being taken advantage of by the powers that be. Yeah. And the, I guess the choice by the director was to represent that sexually. Now, they could have done that differently, but I think yeah. the shock value. But I think, I think part of the message, if you're going to have a movie about a girl experiencing society, sex is going to be a big part of it. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Well, that's, I, I think a and lot And the of... exploitation, sorry to cut you off, but no, the exploitation no. of women for sex too, you know? Right. And, and I think also a lot of what this movie is doing is, is presenting a capsule of an accelerated life. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, Bella is going through all the stages of life in the span of less than a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you look in retrospect at someone's whole life, a lot of it is marked by sex. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty most of most of human existence is marked by right, sex. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's it's. Ooh, ooh, okay, what do you mean by that? Like, I, I, the exist. What do you mean by her? Like, what was marked? Well, like the, in a weird way. Yeah. The suicide is conception. Okay. The black and white is mm-hmm. carrying the child to term. Okay. And then Lisbon is adolescence. Yeah. Because we're skipping childhood because she's fucking. I'm not going to say that, that it's childhood. And then I mean, it's close. It's on a fucking. Yeah, edge. exactly. Yeah. But Lisbon is like. Yeah, it's the growing up phase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. The cruise. Um, the cruise is, is probably more like young adulthood, adolescence, discovering things beyond physicality, or discovering discover- ideas. Discovering, discovering the reality of the world. Right. And being yes. exposed to the real world. And then Paris is finding your way, and then the return to London is like self actualization almost. Right. Mm. So is this is this the Odyssey? I mean, <laughs> they're all kind of the yeah, same. yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, because it's, it's 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 textbook fucking Joseph Campbell, the Hero Circle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, no, it is, but it, yeah, okay. And it's it's just a representation, and I think for a lot of people, Lanth the most obviously based on his filmography. Life is a saga of sex. It's a story of who you're having <clears throat> sex with and what you learn from that person. And relationships and dynamics and yeah, relationships exactly. and yeah. mm-hmm. how you perceive the world. But I think there's an interesting thing to say about how, just how many, um, like, because if everything's about sex, if we're going with that, that kind of lens. And death. And death. Sex and death and yeah. taxes. But, um, I don't know, I find, I, I find that's a big, that's a big, big, like, thing to say. That's like, oh, no. everything. Well, well, he, well, he's talking broad, too, about Lanthimos. He's doing he big strokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess sex, jeez. Yeah, I didn't, like, I thought of it like, okay, yeah, she's having sex or whatever, but I don't, I didn't see his filmography as this sex thing. I just saw it more as this, like... It's not physical, but the, the, yeah, the, again, the the, 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 the the disintegration of relationships, but I don't think that's sex-based. I think it's just the, there's, there's like perceptions that are wrong. So like if, for example, Mark Ruffalo in the movie sees her and she's like, oh, oh, very pretty. I want to use her in a whatever, do whatever I want with her. I think it's, it's more how, how are we taught about power dynamics too? Or how do we assess those? And I think that the whole sex thing is just uh, it's just a vessel, not necessarily the thesis of his work. Mm. Well, I mean, I mean, I want to counter it with this. It's like okay. how I kind of uh, interpret the plot of this yeah. movie is almost like like you're saying this kind of like the the nature of the human soul, kind of like going through things. Well, I don't know. How did you say it before? Uh, everyone else is like. The societal structures and she's and this is just pure human yeah. nature yeah mm. that's how i kind of see it too but i see it as like um like imagine if you dropped a person in the world right now that is completely naive about everything about society and just ran off human nature 
That's kind of how I see Bella Baxter going through the world. Mm -hmm. And kind of her interpreting and understanding how these things are in society, you know? And part of hum a huge part of human nature, probably the biggest part of it, is reproduction and sex. Okay. You know, because I feel like I feel like if you did take someone and put them in society and let them discover human nature on their own, like Bella Baxter did, they'd be fucking twenty four seven. Especially if they're fifteen years old. Especially if they're fifth, Especially if they just went through puberty and they just discovered it. it's amazing, you know. Mm. And I feel like the thing is too is that like I feel like we can't, as a society, we can't. I feel like a lot of people can't allow to. Uh, they ha they don't have they have they don't have it in them mm. to allow women to be like that. It's always men are about sex. Whereas we all know women like sex just as much as men. I mean, that's what, that's what the, and how much do we fuck? The you know? general says her, her, not Bella, but her previous life, Victoria's yeah, Victoria. husband mm -hmm. says, right. He says man's life is all about conquering his sexual desire yeah. and a woman's life is all about bearing children. Yeah. That's, that's the structure that Lanthimos is fighting against. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then that begs the question, too, of, again, coming back to the critics of the movie, a lot of people are like, why do we have to always show women agency through sex? Like, I, that's, that's what I'm curious about. When I was watching the movie, I already knew that there was going to be critics. Well, you know why? I can answer that. I want to know because I'm just kind of, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not, like, saying, like, yeah, that's totally correct as a question. I'm just saying, like, it's true that the more movies I've seen about, like, female agency... The more it is about fighting that idea of it's not just men having sex, yeah. women have sex too. And guess what? They fucking That's like it too. Yeah. Your grandmother liked sex. You know what I mean? Wait, so, my grandma had 12 kids. I hope she liked it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll answer that question about the agency right. thing. Yeah. Let's flip it on its head. Wait, what did you say again? Can you repeat it? I, I kind yeah, of. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, no, the exact words. I just need the exact words to formulate the argument. Okay. The idea in which. So a lot of people will critique this movie saying that why is it that when we when we watch a movie... Women's with, agency is about sex, right? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll counter it by saying this. A lot of... Almost all of women's... This agency is through sex. Ooh, okay. Okay. All right. Almost all of it. The reason why men dominate women because of sex and power. You know? Okay. So I feel like in some way <clears throat> to kind of make it not as powerful... Is also through sex, or like, you know, the way to the way to dominate a man is through sex. Because the thing is, naturally, men are the same way as women when it comes to sex. They want it, yeah, and you can control them for it. Just like, and I'm not saying I'm not saying women want sex and then men control them for it. Men want sex and they control women for it. You know, that's the most base like urge. Most base urge, but like, women can control men because they also want sex. You know. I think a lot of it too is just historically women have been more sexually repressed than men. That's true. Yes, that's true. For by by men, but let's yeah, also keep in forced mind by men. Yeah. You know, to but be let's also repressed. keep in mind here that it is directed by a man. Yes. Right. So it's not a woman. It's not. It's not. Well, Ver this it's is not Vera Chitilova directing well, poor things. Important note: this movie's based off a book. That's very true. By a guy. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Alistair Gray. Yeah. yeah. But so, the the book, I don't think. I haven't read it, but from mm. what I read of the book, does not play so heavily into into yeah, that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't read the book either. So, because uh, again, I get your point, but again, to rebuttal that, it's a guy directing it, and it's a book written by a man. So there is that again. There's that idea of yes, look at this woman. She's independent and she's having sex with all these men. There is that. Well, I mean, I mean, like, listen, it's like. He's allowed to make a movie about what he how he feels about absolutely, women, absolutely. you know. I mean, would it have been better if Greta Gerwig <clears throat> directed it and did like a Barbie, you know, and spoke for the women. I mean, that's I think what was so great about Barbie is that it had all that that stuff about female agency without the sex. Exactly. Yeah. True. But she was also a doll without a pussy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's there you still, go. <laughs> still controlling the man through some kind of yes. sexual. But I mean, I mean, even if it wasn't, there was no sex in the movie. The, I feel like the relationship Ken wanted from her yes. was the fill-in for sex. Right. Yeah. You know? And, but the thing is, is that when you look at Barbie, right, it's like, oh, my purpose is to be Ken, and my purpose is to be Barbie's boyfriend. But that's the thing, is that a lot of... You're, you're, you're fed this world, or you're, you live in this world where it's like, 
you're fed the idea that you have sex with girl. You, your, your worth as a man or as a woman is based through sex. We've established this in many films. We've established yeah. this in many ethics courses, whatever. But to the point of Barbie, what I find Barbie also does well, little tangent, it enables, it tells Ken, hey, your purpose can be a little more than just trying to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the men in poor things are trying to find their purpose. Like this fucking, the, the Mark Ruffalo's character is an idiot. Don't he's a complete it. buffoon. But he's trying to find purpose through the idea of conquering Emma. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a warped version of Ken and Barbie. Where Ken is this doofus. And then Barbie is this girl with all the, she holds all the power of like yes or no. I want sex or not. And then, then it happens or then it doesn't. I mean power, bro. Bella Baxter is basically like a, a, like a child when he starts no, having her. Yes, but the point is... They're, 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 always, they're taking advantage of her on court, you know? Yes, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the, 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 the dynamics of it I find are very similar because it's also... You have to understand too, I think that a lot of the men are just taught the, oh, if you can't get a girl, your purpose is stupid. I mean, talk, say that to the penguins and the fucking, the, 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 the polar ice. What's it called? Antarctica. Yes. Antarctica. Yes. yes. The but there's a, there's a, <laughs> the polar, yeah. the, the polar, polar up there in the North Pole. Bro, it's like, it's like, you're, you're, okay, South Pole. <laughs> it's like, uh, the you know, like that, that, that planet Earth where he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the penguin the penguins, has yeah. failed to find a mate. Yes. He will die alone. Die alone. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's yeah. the lobster though. That's what the lobster is. Right. That's that's just that's just animal that's nature. Right. But that's it's it's not just animal. It's nature. Yeah, it's nature. And, yeah. But, it, but it's become societal. Yes, it's become a yeah because we're smart. It, but it's be, no, but it's become. And we can it's, build houses and drink other animals' milk and stuff like that. But it's and become a Google. pillar of how society works. It's <laughs> drink not just enough Google. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but I think, society. but I think that's, I think that's what Lanthimos is playing into. Right. Right. right? He's yeah. saying that. Our society is built on these structures of sexual dynamics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is easy to be taken advantage of. But it's just as easy to regain control. And through doing that, you realize that there is life beyond that dynamic. Mm -hmm. I would say all that, I don't agree with his kind of thesis in this movie. Okay. But see, I don't think there is a think thesis. That was that was me. That was oh, okay. Going on. I got scared for a second. I don't think there is a thesis. I mm -hmm. think the thesis is is to have Bella as this vehicle to point out irony in society. That's yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm know? saying his view of society or oh, like yeah, the sure. nature versus nurture, like, is this stuff taught to you or is it natural? Yeah. I don't really agree with his kind of take on it in this movie, at least. I don't agree with Lanthimos' take on anything in any of his movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Dogtooth is, his take on family life is completely fucked. His oh, yeah, His take yeah. on relationship mm -hmm. is completely, his, his take on... I, that's what I was going to up in Greece, bro. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, in I, Laval. I think he makes, yeah, he makes Laval. Like Lobster, yeah. though. I think Lobster is more on track with kind of how we experience the world than yes. this movie. Yeah. And the favorite is not for us, I don't think. Yeah. I liked it, yeah, but it's, it's the, yeah. It's um, weird. Yeah. It was a weird movie. Mm -hmm. But it, that doesn't take away from the movie no, itself. No. no. No, this movie is incredible. Yeah. Like, you don't First have to agree or like, oh, think credit, credit to the movie that we can mm -hmm. disagree with it and still love it so much. That's what oh, yeah. no, but there's so yeah. much, yeah. There's so much to, to, to look at in this movie. There's so much going on in the movie. I find that the... First of all, I think the actors brought their A game. It was fantastic. Oh, dude. Emma Stone. At, so, you guys know. Uh, maybe you don't know. Mm -hmm. I used to be a special care counselor. Okay. Nice work with special care kids. You yeah. Know? So I've had Bella Baxter's puke on me before. Yeah. You know? Worse than her. Like, way worse, bro. And at first, when I was watching the movie, I was like, they don't walk like that. You know? They walk pretty normal. You know? Yeah. But she's having this, like, weird well, walk. She was walking like a toddler, not like a... Yes. I mean, I realized that later, yeah. you know? But the more I got into the movie, the more I liked mm. the character. The more I was like, okay, her performance is amazing. Yeah. You know? Especially... At the end of the movie, right. where she becomes this adult and self-actualized yeah. and very well read and talks right, yeah, I was like, like it was like like that the moment where she came back to Godwin at the end, it was probably my favorite part of the movie because mm -hmm. it felt transcendental. It felt like this thing, you know, that was like it. it, it the ending of this movie very satis satisfied me very much. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was very. 
it wasn't like it wasn't like too happy, mm. but it wasn't too melancholic like a Lord of the Rings ending. But it was just right, and it's exactly what I wanted from it. You know, mm. I, I, you had mentioned that you you don't feel as much love in this movie. Yeah, the reason I bring it up is, romantic love, I guess. Right, me neither. Yeah. and I don't think you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. But something Bella says to Max at the end of the movie is, "I like this practical love we have." Yeah, right. I think that's that's most how love works mm-hmm. in this in this world. Maybe for Lance the most, I'm not going to speak for him, but yeah. in this movie, that's the image of love that works that we're presented with. Yeah. It's this practical idea, the concept of love. Of yeah, not love, not love being some raw passionate emotion yeah although max rebuttals with well there's some passion in there too which is you know you mm. need that too then that's yeah that's, you need lust in order for love well, to kind of and that's that's yeah. the, that's the whole picture Absolutely. right well, it's not just one it's not just the other it's mm-hmm. it's it's both well th- think about this too it's like a lot of the really great you know uh strong relations in this world are not just lustful right things they're they're partially practical and they're like like, you know, I like, I talk, like, I have a couple people I know that are like, it's arranged marriage, but they love each other, yeah. you know? And it starts off as, pra- I mean, it's still practical love, but it's like, it's, it's like you, you grow to love the person. I mean, doesn't, mm-hmm. don't arranged marriages have a higher success rate than... They do. Yeah. Oh yeah, way higher, way yeah. higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, you know? And I mean, that's, and there's, there's, there's tons of literature on this specifically yeah. of whether or not love is felt or learned mm-hmm. yeah right and it's a hard question because no one wants to no one wants to say it's learned because then it feels forced it feels fake well i feel like but i both. feel like so i feel like the thing is especially with men too is like you know when you lust for someone and you're infatuated with them mm-hmm. it's it's a different type of love uh, I, I don't want to say it's like a true love it's not but I feel like that's like a start, a beginning to it. But once you mature and you are with the person more and it turns into a more practical thing where you talk about goals and the future and stuff like that. And if it aligns right, then if you guys are clicking enough, you know, that's when the true love part comes of it. Where you can like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know. That's how I feel about it's it. It's like you know? after the honeymoon stage, you know? Yeah, you after the honeymoon the stage. Life. And, you know? I, and I think that's where we're starting to key in on maybe the true theme of the film. And it, it plays into a lot of Bella's struggles in the in the second and third act mm-hmm. of this idea of whether or not a person and vicariously through people, society can improve. Yeah. Right. And, and practical love is built on a foundation of whether or not the two members of that relationship can improve each other in a way that is not dogmatic. Yeah. In a way that has no power dynamics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You improve each other in a way that is comfortable and beneficial to, yes. to both parties. They're not yes. holding things against each other. And there's an understanding. Other. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I think I think that's kind of, in a weird way, what we're supposed to get from this movie. Something like that, at least. Yeah. I mean, if you've watched the movie... It's a weird conclusion to come to. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird conclusion to come to. But I think it's accurate. But the way the way they bring about it is so not like McCandless. McCandles. McCandless. Uh, it's funny. His name is McCandless in the book. Oh, interesting. Huh. Yeah. Well, anyway, so Max and and Bella. <laughs> but actually, sorry. McCandless is Godwin Baxter in the book. Oh, what the I heck? think Lanthimos added, he separated the characters. Interesting. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's all good. So, the, um, I find like, they're so not compatible as characters that it actually feels weird as a conclusion. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't, I don't like them as a couple. Like, it sounds I think at the end say, I do. Really? At the end I do, but, yeah. But they don't talk to each other. They're not very... They don't need to, bro. They, they have this shared... Yeah. In the past, experience, they, yeah. you know, they in agree the past, there's like a two minute scene, yeah, but it's boring, you know. It's like, yeah, but... <laughs> they, they, they I, gotta, I gotta find skip through that, <laughs> like, again, to maybe, like, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna rip on the, the movie itself, I'm just gonna rip on the thesis. If you're gonna do that thesis, maybe have characters that actually maybe get along a little more naturally than yeah. this. It feels very 
Frankenstein monster learning how to. Well, well, it's uh, you know? it's it's. Well, the thing is too is like you have to understand is that like uh, Bella Baxter at the end of it when she's like, "Well, I want to marry me candles." She's viewing it as a practical relationship, mm-hmm. for right. almost strictly, whereas he's in that lustful kind of early stage relationship thing that I was talking about, you know. So I feel like that works, you know. Yes, I I think I think maybe that th- this theme we're discussing would have landed better if we would have had more character development from the candles. I think yeah. so too. I think it's subtle, but it's there. Okay. In his disillusionment towards Godwin Baxter, he he grows to learn about the real world in a similar way that Bella does. In the world she grew up in, mm-hmm. but I I definitely don't think there's enough of that. Yeah, I to, yeah to, I didn't yeah. find yeah exactly that's the. That's one of my gripes with the movie is that the candles was very underplayed mm-hmm. as a character when I think it could have been more like, well, I was like, know. he gets upset, like, you know, he gets upset that, oh, oh, she's going around and sleeping with other men. It's like, that could have been a scene where he gets like genuinely upset, livid, nearly misogynistic and misanthropic. McCandles? But then, no, but that, yeah. that's not his character. But he, he's that's not his character. Well, it's not yeah. his character. I know it's not his character, but mm. if the character was a little different... I think that that whole idea of practical love should be the way to go and not and not be lustful. I think that could be that could have it could have played better on paper. Well, I don't know because I feel like I feel like the reason why she wants to marry McCandles because probably McCandles is the only one who actually really cares about her. Yeah. That that actually kind of loves her in not just a practical or lustful way, like an unconditional kind of like you know like I I love this person, not not just like yeah, but it's like. He loves her for who she is and and not for what he wants her to be, you know? Right. That's how I feel. And another part of the love thing that we're talking about is the, the love that Godwin has for her as a daughter. This familial love, this parental love, you know? Which I feel like she really gets at the end of the movie when she comes to see him dying. Mm-hmm. Or even in the beginning of the movie when she finally leaves to Lisbon and you see like uh, Godwin kind of slips in a bunch of money into her and sews it into her clothes. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's a parent thing to do, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he says it, right? He does, yeah. Verbatim, he says, like, my parental feelings outweigh my sexual desires. Because I don't that's fuck crazy. her. That's, a cr- but that's, cr- that's such a crazy line. See, that's subtle. And that works a lot well because that looks well, that works a lot better. A lot well. A lot better because of the way we've established the world mm-hmm. and the rules of how the story's going to go on. McCandles is it kind of... He, it doesn't, he doesn't fit. He's very... It's very one note. And like that, I that, that fucking. Well, he's a mind. wizard. Yeah, but well, everyone yeah, other than Bella is one note. Like Mark Ruffalo doesn't change. The husband doesn't change. No, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. Poor word. Then he's. It's very wooden. Okay. It doesn't. I don't feel a change from mm-hmm. him. I just feel that he's just been like this already. And there's no real character development. It's just that, I think, it's just Bella Baxter finally realizing. Well, I'll go, I'll go that route because it's better. He respects me as a person, as an individual, and we can build something. But that, 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 what, what, uh, Willem Dafoe says, my, my parental responsibilities outweigh your, me wanting to have sex with you is wild. That's a, that's crazy because that adds to the gravity of the situation of, I'm just a woman in literally a man's world that's built by men made by men and I'm just some pawn that can be taken advantage of. And so again, coming with this female agency, a lot of people I think, oh, sex is her female agency. That makes no sense. It's so repeated and cliched and it's just a man filming a movie. I think the agency only comes in at the end when she decides not to have sex with sex with, with Max McCandles. And I feel, but the way the movie is made makes that out to be such a bad decision because of the way she's presented as a character she's if she enjoys all of these fun debaucherous things and she always asks questions she's always very into whatever's going on she wants to kind of be uh you know she wants to push buttons but then when she comes home it's like all right i'm done well for me it's more about how like uh for me on that front it's more like she she's spending all this time like living life to the max and kind of experience everything to the max 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 she wants to experience everything but by the time she gets to the end of the movie she's experienced everything so now she just wants to settling down settle down almost you know Mm. 
and have her surgery and continue what Godwin was doing. Because I feel like Bella Baxter does love Godwin too as a father figure, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. She does care about him. If she didn't, yeah. she wouldn't come back after the scene he's dying, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's that's one thing I wish I got from this movie was um, maybe a scene of Godwin being like, damn, what the fuck happened to you? You're coherent. You talk. You're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of wish that, that that kind of scene happened, but it didn't. But I feel like it was understood, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can kind of imagine they were sending postcards and stuff, though. Yeah, I can imagine that, like, when she got there and he and she's talking, like, super smart and yeah. normal, he'd be like, damn, and they, ha- and they had that talk, you know? Yeah. But it would have been a little satisfying, proud, you know? Yeah. It would have been, like, a little yeah. fan service yeah. for me, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, because you mentioned the postcards, but her postcards weren't nearly as literate as her... Talking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we get the first one, I'm imagining. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Check your notes. But yeah, no, but it's, it's good that we're talking about this because a lot of the research I did in the movie after is that like there is this debate about whether this movie is a feminist movie or whether it's a fetishization fetishization of, yeah. of this kind of thing. You know, it definitely rides the line. And there was this controversy. Oh, it some absolutely peop- rides the line. Some people yeah. really hate this movie. Some people think it's really, really feminist and good. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I really did enjoy the movie. Like, I'm not trying to diss on the movie at all. No, no, I no. thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it's just that I think. Being aware of how it's being seen just as a piece of, of art. Yeah. It's there's so much conversations about this movie which I didn't even expect. I was just expecting seriously, people were like, the eh, movie's good. She it's Emma Stone. Yeah, but we're not reviewing Marvel movies here, Laz. <laughs> exactly. But that's the point, is that there's it's it's and again with the, the see I never really I, I, I got I mean I I saw a few lengthy most, but I never started, you know, thinking, Oh, he probably hates his parents and hates relationships you know like i never started putting pieces like that together until right like literally 45 minutes ago yeah right so i think there's there's that to unpack Mm -hmm. with his movies in general then to see okay is he fetishizing or is he kind of trying to represent something of a new avenue how relationships like is relationships being practical a good thing or a bad thing into in lanthimos's eyes i don't really know well i I think for Lanthimos, I don't think he's making a statement here. I think mm. yeah, he's I trying think so to figure it out through his art. I think these are the issues he struggles with in life, and through his art, he can deal with them and contemplate them and express them. Yeah, I don't think he has like this mission statement with this movie where he's trying no. to come to this meaningful conclusion, you know? Right. I think it's just like this abstract way of kind yeah. of discovering these things through Bella Baxter. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it. Well, it's the same, think, same it, thing as Lobster where they kind of just take it apart and yeah. you look at the whole thing and you go, okay, well, that's what it is, like, I guess. I, I, I'd like to imagine that like Bella Baxter's role in this movie was to kind of do stuff. And then every time they have, like, I feel like the way they wrote the script was like, next time they do something, they're like, what would she do in that situation? Mm-hmm. Like, naturally, what would yeah. that character... If that character existed, what would they do in that situation? Right. You know? Instead of instead of Yorgos Lathmanos or whoever's writing the, the, the character to, to make the decision for her, they're letting the character make the decision. Mm. And whether they like it or not for their movie right. is irrelevant, you know? Right. Yeah. And I think, um, especially for genre yeah. filmmakers, uh, there's the old uh, saying, right, write what you know. Yes. And I feel like for a lot of genre filmers, for a lot of genre filmmakers, it's not so much write what you know, but it ends up being they write about their anxieties. Because that's what is on their mind most of the time. Mm-hmm. Especially in horror. Interesting. And, I, I, and, I, and this is why I'm, I'm bringing all this up. Not because I don't, I don't think Lanthimos is, is, is making a, a harsh statement or stating an opinion or anything i think he's just exploring his anxieties Mm -hmm. i know i don't think it's like a part like i think it's only a feminist or fetishized movie like if you think about it like that but i think it's just like this exploration yeah it's like eraserhead it's like lynch yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah this is so there's no there's no statement there's no theme there's no thesis it's just an exploration of anxieties yeah, it's, it's just you know. well. If you really look into Lynch and Eraserhead, it's like an exploration of his fucking living situation at the time. Yeah, well, yeah that, <laughs> and he doesn't it, yeah. want to admit but, it. You but know? That's, what it, that's that's it. Like it's, it's him having a kid when he's making the movie. You know, a, like it's art as an outlet for all. This for kid's gonna watch life. Eraserhead and be like, "Fuck, this is how you think of me?" Yeah, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know. I love Eraserhead. Oh, Eraserhead's top here. Yeah. Um, we mentioned God, Godwin. They mm-hmm. call him God. Yeah. Apart from the obvious of him creating. 
Bella yeah. and stuff. Do we think there's more to that play? Well, no. I think it was Mary Shelley's dad's name. Godwin? I think that's what I read. Oh, really? I think so. So you, you think it's also an homage I think to, so, the, yeah. to, to the illusion? Yeah. Mm. Do we think there's more to the illusion? I mean, it fits I don't perfectly. Think so. You don't think there's more I to actually like I think the it idea. fits just right. Yeah, it fits great. I like the idea that Godwin Baxter is the one with all the scars and the... Yeah. I, I think that's a little nice touch of like a characterization of like, yeah, he's the scientist, but he's also the one with all the f- yeah. face weird shapes. It's like and all. Frankenstein's monster but, making a yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's exactly it's a pretty like, a pretty monster. Yeah, it's know? like if Igor was making the monster. Yeah, and Igor had a brain, you know. It's, and Igor was hot. Yeah. 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 But like for me, the god the god thing is just fine. Like it's not. I think it's. I don't. I don't want there to be mm-hmm. more. No, not more to it. Around the god, like yeah. more symbolism. I think she calls him God because. Even at the time, she didn't know he created her like that. She calls him God because it's short for Godwin, you know? I actually... See, so, at the end of the movie, when they're all in the little uh, garden... Yeah. Mm-hmm. My reading of this movie wasn't necessarily like, oh, practical love and all this. My reading was, turn to God. Because well, your debauchery... Yeah. yeah, your debauchery will be the death of you. Like, she literally yeah. comes back to church... Yorios Lanthimos is Greek. Whether or not you're religious, when you grow up with a Greek family, you will know about religion. It's just part, it's just innate in you. Mm -hmm. You will go to church, you will learn about Easter, you will learn about all these things, you will need to not commit sin. It's just kind of part of it. I don't even think it's a Greek thing. I mean, no, 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 not a Greek thing, but like, it's like, you're like, you're just saying that because you're Greek. No, but, <laughs> but 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 there is. No, I grew up the same way. I mean, my, neither of my parents are religious right. by any means, but just the the society we've built is so ingrained with the Christian ethos that it's it's almost impossible not yeah. to internalize some of it. Yeah, yeah, a little. Yeah, that's the thing. And then and like growing up with pa- grandparents, not parents, grandparents who were religious enough, who are religious enough. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, it's like you kind of learn like, huh, maybe some people after this whole time of debauchery, they turn to God. Or it's like because of this time of debauchery, what, turning to a faith will absolve you? And again, it's just, I'm not I'm not judging anyone who does this. I'm just curious to see how he reads his own movie. Is this the Garden mm-hmm. of Eden? Is this, was was that God? This idea that, oh, my, my parental responsibilities outweigh my sexual desires for you. Coming back to the idea of Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. Adam, no one gives a fuck about Adam, but Eve is the one who bit the apple and then God is like, Ugh, and then, you know, it's this whole idea, but then God at the end of the day is like, eh, well, you are a girl. You're just a girl. What about the dog with the fucking goose head? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I, so, so, well so, that's some of his many, many creations. creations. But I mean, this is why I bring it up, because the way yeah. I interpreted it was... All the fucking animals, by the way. It's a uh, me too. I yeah, think so. I'll I'll comment on that first because it's shorter. I think the animals, the hi- the animal hybrids, represent. It's a it's a symbol for the duality of human nature. The duality of nature. I think that's too much reading. I think it's just experiment. This is what I do. <clears throat> okay. This is what I do. Is I read too much into stuff. That's my job here on yeah, the podcast. Okay, sure. So what I what I read into the because you know it's not like dog. it's not like you had to save the dog. No, I know. Yeah, like you just swapped their no, heads I know. for I'm fun. Just, I'm, just, <laughs> you know, I'm just doing my thing here. But uh, the, the the whole God, the calling him God and stuff, to me it was a complete inversion of the death of God. It's it's presenting this world God is where God religious. is not religious. God sure. is cold, clinical, and scientific. This sure. is the God we're given, and this is what happens with that God. And now with the death of this God, I like that. I love we that. find a return to Eden. We find and a new God. Well, I don't yeah, know. And Bob Baxter. Yeah, but I think she might have like become her own creator with his death. Because then she's changing mm-hmm. the brain and her old husband. Well, she so created she herself by, by going out and getting all these experiences. Yeah, you know? so she's not coming back to God. She's becoming her own God. Yeah, like what's more important, yeah, the, the, but the physical not, creation or the abstract mental one, you know? That's what I mean the by the inversion thing, of it. Yeah. Is that we're, we're calling this person God, we're calling this thing God, that is textbook the opposite of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And through that we get the debauchery and stuff, which is, okay. which is a, a classical image of of a godless state mm. but once we have the death of god we have a, a, a slight return to religion and i also yeah. keyed into the imagery of the garden at the end yeah and all that stuff yeah that garden but, thing actually i think that's like the it's it's 
it's like etched. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I think there's something about the whole childhood thing. There was something about that that Garden of Eden. I'll call it that for now. It's, it was like, ooh. That, when you when you think of it, do you imagine me and Chris coming out the back with a golf cart? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. What were you going to say, Nick? I was wondering what, what you meant. Where was textbook opposite of like the God idea? Well, because, I mean, in... I mean, it's... I guess maybe I phrased it wrong because there's there's obviously more than one text. There's Old Testament God, there's New mm. Testament God, but yeah. the God being science, okay, and reason and mm-hmm. and oh, I get what you're saying. And okay, yeah. math and yeah. that's that's to me is is textbook opposite oh, of God. Yeah. My, my right? dad lies. My fucking fucking sink is disgusting, bro. A lot of <laughs> the uh, no, I mean I have a lot of I have a lot of dishes in there. No worries. I feel like there's a lot of because there's no mention of any religion or God in this movie. No. no. Mm-hmm. Apart from Godwin, yeah, and socialism, <laughs> and the, and it's it's there's a lot of of playing into ethics and morality in the absence of religion, mm-hmm. right? Bella discovers all of this stuff through philosophy instead, mm-hmm. and lizard. Um, well, she she I, I feel like she finds that that does not hold all the answers. Yeah, and it's it's only through her own personal enlightenment. That she finds any answers that are yes. satisfying, and it's very Buddhist. This movie, right? Very Buddhist. Really? Yes, dude. See, okay, so because I wouldn't mind after after this, because the whole socialist thing was like super apparent throughout the entire movie. It's like you are the means of production. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, like and, yeah, yeah, and there's and but there's a lot of. Um, attempts at indoctrination right there's a lot of people trying to force their ideas and their perspectives onto bella and um none of them are religious Mm -hmm. but it's not that she finds religion in the end but it's it's that this false god is dead now Mm -hmm. oh yeah that that brings some sort of religious ethos yeah i i feel that yeah, I think the religious ethos is important in this movie because I think without it, the the clinical scientific thing would have just been heightened and it would have been very cold. I yeah. think the film would have been very much more colder, which is weird because the film itself isn't very warm. It feels very like it's saturated. The temperatures are high in the cinematography of it, but the but it's a very cold movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like detached, you're saying. It's detached. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah the characters are kind of off. Because color, color-wise, it's very warm. Color-wise, mm-hmm. it's super warm. Well, especially Lisbon. Yeah, yeah. especially Lisbon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the, ho- yeah. the warm places. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I mean, because Paris, it's snowing, mm-hmm. which yes. is weird for Paris, but yeah, yeah, that much snow. But I found, but I found like, that whole, like, I don't know how far it is in the book. I don't know how much of the, you know, the means of production is spoken about. But that idea, again, this... This whole, the fetishization of a girl, but then it's like, you're an object, you're a machine, you are, this is who you are, you own this, this is what you, your body, you will sell this body to people, that's insane, it's, it, there's, there's so much, like the religious aspect I find, it's, to your point, like the death of the false god brings in, I think, the introduction to, not faith, but Okay, so like, for context, you, if you, if you, if you do a bunch of stuff, whatever, whatever, then you're seeking, oh, I'm seeking to be repented, I want to be absolved, I want to be forgiven, right? Mm -hmm. You start going to people, you start asking for forgiveness, they're not giving it to you, okay? Imagine. Then you're like, oh, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? You need to completely change your ways. All right, start changing your ways. Meanwhile... The person that taught you all the original ways, completely out of the picture. And that's why you sell to the land of the West. What? But I think oh, so. Wolverines. <laughs> I mean, to and this, I'm, 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 I will 100% say right now, I'm incredibly biased because I, I love Gnosticism, mm. not agnosticism, mm-hmm. but Gnosticism. Yeah, yeah. Like, what if there is? No, that's no. That's what I'm like saying. Gnosticism. The opposite. Yeah, just G N O. S- the one that there is. Yeah, I see. No, what, no. So it's it's this I it's this weird proto religion that came out of, um, 
Alexander the Great's empire. Okay. The the union of the Hellenistic era yeah. with the Babylonian and the Egyptian. Okay. The, the, there's this weird religion that kind of took themes from all of these other traditions and kind of flipped Christianity on its head. And at the core of this of this ideology was that um, you do not reach salvation through the absolvement of your sins through by repenting. You reach salvation you. through gross. knowledge. Yeah. And it's, it's specifically a knowledge of what God really is. And in that regards, each branch of Gnosticism varies. Huh. But in terms of a, of a theme and an idea, it's, it's something that, that hasn't died out in culture. And it's in early Gnostic teachings, there was all these perversion of the Old Testament, okay. where the snake in the Garden of Eden was the good guy. He was the true God, giving the fruit like of a, knowledge. Like a, like a Levian way? Kind of, Like yeah. Satanism? Levian Satanism? A bit. I don't know how much... Cause that's like the that's like the Levian idea. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much Anton Levy knew about Gnosticism, but it, it's definitely a precursor. Oh yeah, and it and like, yeah. So the snake is the good guy trying to trying to give mankind free will and knowledge of the true God, and there's all this death of the false God, and the the Old Testament God is the false God, the Creator God is evil. Mm. The creator is evil. It was an evil act to create mankind. And it's our job through the pursuit of knowledge to recognize that and to find the true God to reach salvation through knowledge. And I think this, again, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of That's Greek a, influence wow. in Gnosticism as well. So maybe Lanthimos is familiar with these ideas mm. in some way. He has to be. But... A lot of those themes are there. Yeah, because I, I think the Gnosticism. I think it started with like the dual god idea. Yeah, the the, the yeah the god mm -hmm. and the godhead. And Gork then Gork and after, Mork. Yeah, then it became like the triple god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Three faced god, and that's very Greek. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And there's 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 the there's perversions <laughs> in in the Gnostic literature. There's perversions of tons of Hellenistic texts, all the Old Testament stories, Babylonian myths, mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. But specifically for this story. Specifically for this movie. <laughs> Do we need to take a break? No, don't. Damn, no, no, because like, so you're talking awesome. about the dual god, <laughs> and I'm like, Gork and Mork. Yeah, I, I, I heard I you. I didn't get it. <laughs> no, but you said... No, yeah, I don't think you'll ask me those references. I just think you thought it was dumb. Because <laughs> But the reference is from Warhammer. <laughs> There's <laughs> these goblins in Warhammer and Orcs. And their god is Gork and Mork, and they're two different gods. Yeah. But one is brutal, but cunning. The other one is cunning, but, but brutal. brutal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the dumbest shit ever, <laughs> Sorry, keep going. What were you saying? No. no, I'm just saying. There's a lot of a lot of the Gnostic tenets are in this movie, right? The 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 death of the false god, the creator god of being evil, the pursuit of knowledge as salvation. Mm -hmm. and the, all well, that stuff. that's why I say it's very Buddhist too, because like a lot of misconceptions about Buddhism is that there's this god, and that people who are Buddhist they pray to God, yeah. this god called the Buddha. You know, Buddha is not a god. He's a guy. Well, he he, he the the first one. No, it's a, it's a title. Right. The first Buddha was Siddhartha, and he was the first one to become enlightened and teach other people how to become enlightened. And a lot of it was through knowledge and self-reflection and self-actualization. Yeah. And so, like, all these other Buddhas are just... A Buddha is just a title for someone that has become enlightened. That's yeah. it, you know? God, is, in Buddhism, correct me if I'm wrong, God is the universe. Right, we everyone is God because everyone is part of the universe. The universe well, once you become enlightened, you become well. There's no God. There's no God idea. In right. Buddhism. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just there's Buddhas, and if someone becomes enlightened, they are a Buddha. Right. And there's different ways of becoming a Buddha. You know, some people come naturally from birth. Some people have to go through their whole life, then they become a Buddha. And the whole thing about becoming a Buddha is to is to teach other people and help other people to self actualize and become Buddhas too. Yeah. So when you see people praying at a temple to all these Buddhas. They're not, they're not praying to the Buddha. They're just like, oh, greeting him. And the Buddha is a representation for these all these other people that have reached this enlightenment. But yeah. they're not, there's no, 
spirit or god they're praying to. It's just like a represent. It's a representation of all these other people that become enlightened. Yeah. You know? Just to, just just so I understand correctly, Buddha, right? <laughs> Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> I think also this like pseudo resurrection of mm. Bella's baby, being yeah. implanted, Victoria's baby, being implanted in her own body. Mm-hmm plays into the the buddhist idea of resurrection as well yeah right yeah you, of course you try yes. again and again and again until you reach yes yes okay now i have a question for you guys do you think victoria's baby was a male or female oh that'd be funny i didn't think of that they show the fetus i didn't notice any dick. oh fuck that's a crazy question i didn't question. notice a baby cock on that bad boy well i mean would you that's the first thing i zone in on <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know it looked pretty developed the fetus I don't know, bro. I don't think it matters. I, I mean, think... I think it's a girl, like, but you know, it's like, it's like that's an interesting question. Yeah, I, don't I, don't think, I don't think, think it, I don't think it matters think because so of how Yorios represents the ideas of like sex, right? Everyone wants sex, men and women. True, true. So no matter who it is, yeah. people it's are going to be like this. People are like this. Yeah. The issue well, the, is, the, the, sorry, go ahead. The 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 issue is yeah. if it's the brain of a dude in a woman's body. Then that kind of almost changes changes this kind of pseudo thesis statement we have about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think it does. I don't think it does because it changes the agency away from the. Not only that, no. I I feel like what happens is instead, it's just people like no matter who it is, people want sex, and because for face value, it's Bella Baxter and not Bob or Benny. Bella Baxter has these challenges of. I want sex or I want agency. And people are like, oh, no, you can't. You're a woman. Well, sometimes she wants she wants experience. She wants experience. But experience is hard to get when you're a woman confined in space. Yeah. You're in that bubble. Yeah, I think the brain is supposed to be like a blank slate. Restart oh, yeah? and okay. scratch. Well, that's what I was going to say. Does, does, like, obviously there is there is biological sex. Wait, are you saying the baby was non-binary? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, does a brain, your hormones aren't produced in your brain. Your sexual yeah. hormones are produced in your body. Yeah. Right. So whether you put, before any of those hormones are, are pumping in you, your brain is genderless. Do I look like a, a, a psychiatrist, bro? But no, I'm, I'm <laughs> actually, like a paleontologist, I'm actually <laughs> pondering the, the question seriously biologically now because I know there's, you sent me a, a, a lecture. Oh, the, the From, uh, Robert Spalsky one? Maybe. He's like a biopsychologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behavioral psychologist. Yeah, yeah, and he was talking about how there's been research done with uh, transgender people. Yeah. And I hope <clears throat> not to offend because I, I'm i going to speak from memory on this lecture. But he was saying that there's a, there's a part of the brain that is consistently either enlarged or reduced. Yeah. In male identifying people and female identifying people mm-hmm. irrelevant to their birth sex yeah. before homor- hormone replacement therapy. Mm-hmm. So it's this idea that depending on your actual brain's physiology will determine or can be a determining factor as to whether or not you identify with a specific gender. I'm confused. Do you think the baby was a girl or a boy? No, I'm just I'm just exploring this idea on a, on a physiological level. So what exactly is it that gets bigger or smaller? I don't remember, and I don't want to get. The, I, don't I think guess the I, I know exactly what part of the brain you're talking about because yeah. I, I I I've watched the lecture a million times. Yeah. I and I, I mean, was it the hippocampus? I don't think so. I would have remembered. It was it was something it's near there. It's it's something very specific that he talks about the whole lecture. Yeah. Like it's the part of the brain that's important to the whole yeah. class almost. You know. Anyways, so whether the whether the baby was a male or female might not matter. It might not. It might only matter the size of that one. But it might matter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all 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 how 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 developed does a baby have to be to 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 produce the physiological identifiers of sex? Apparently, like three years old. In this movie. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I mean, all babies start as like a pseudo female. Yes, that's true. Yeah. What? No, they're not even pseudo, like straight up female. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Bro, your penis is really like a really oh, large. Oh, yeah, penis. I thought you meant like we come out and 
No, no, in in, oh, in your yeah, mother's yeah, belly, yeah, we yeah, all yeah, start yeah. as a... As, yeah, that's why we have nipples, yeah. bro. Yes. Right. So maybe... It's like a breastfeed my cat. Maybe it was still at that... Uh, what? Don't blast I was mic. doing a Ouija board on the... Um, on the graffiti table. So maybe it doesn't matter, depending on the development of the game. Maybe it doesn't, right? but it's kind of an interesting, interesting question. Yeah, know? fun to think about. Fun to think mm-hmm. about. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I mean, like, I think my favorite part of this movie is is the plot. Like, I love the idea, mm-hmm. you know, of of a woman dying and you 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 resurrect her by implanting that it's unborn child's yeah, brain into fun. it. It's a fucking good idea. Yeah. You know, it's a good plot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a very interesting plot device, you know. It's it's super sick, you know. Well, it reminds me of my favorite fucking old uh, gorilla movies and stuff like Nabonga and shit. Where it's <laughs> like a monkey's body. <laughs> exactly. Those are sick. Those um, one thing I I found underwhelming with this movie was mm-hmm. uh, the scene where she goes and sees the poor people. Mm-hmm. It just looked like a slum, and they're just like walking around like doing nothing. Yeah. Well, they were waiting to rope, rob, and rape them. <laughs> yeah, but like, like, like when she watches, she's like in a horror of what's happening. Yeah, but they're just like naked and homo habilis is like walking around town. Yeah, but she's been eating fucking pastries her whole life in a cafe. Right. Yeah, yeah, she's I know, lived privileged. I know, but she's not watching anything super hor- horrific over here. She's watching like no. the poor people be yeah. like poor. You know? Babies but are maybe. dying. That was the po- that's what fucked her up. Yeah, but they're, like they're I, I didn't see like were they like roasting the babies on a spit or something? Or no, what? just through you know classic mm-hmm. infant mortality. Yeah, and Buddy told her. <laughs> like, like yeah. it, it yeah. could have been like yeah. I want to. I, I would have liked to see some horrific shit. You know, some like dismembering. Yeah. There was some good gore in it. Though. Yeah. There was fun gore in this movie. No, but I mean in that scene, in that, that one scene, scene. Yeah, yeah, in that one scene, the yeah. eye stabbing. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like the the dick pulling too right before that. Just good stuff. Good, good old mm. stuff, bro. Just good visuals. Another yeah. fucking irky part of this movie was the whorehouse parts. It was long. You know, when, Anything in Paris was long. No, but like you know, when the first the long. first guy she has sex with in the brothel, yeah, the really like lanky kind of looking like a uh, stoner looking guy, yeah. yeah. And oh, dude, I was just like, fuck, that must. Like I kind of understood. How how much sex work sucks after watching? That. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the hook and the, the dad. No, not even the guy with the hook. I'm just talking about the first guy. Okay, not the, the first guy that was that. No, the weird like 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 the blockbuster like video story yeah. guy. Not the guy crawling on the ground all fucked up. The crab walk. Dude. No, that the was crab walk was hilarious. Dude. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm talking about the first guy where he just like took her pants off. She just laid there and he just started hovering. Uh, Three pumps. Three pumps, and it's it. And and she's like, what the fuck is this? You know? <laughs> it's a classic three pump and dump, dude. Fuck me down, bro. Fuck me down. You know, eventually she kind of got into the sex word thing and just kind of like, you know, was being a sex word. But like, I, I must I must imagine that, that that first one is like what yeah. it must feel like to... Yeah. Fucking weird, you know? Mm. Yeah. Shit. The... She was stoked after. She got thirty bucks, dude. Got thirty bucks. Bro. Got some snacks. You know you yeah. can do it. You know you can do it. Thirty bucks. Uh, get a couple a lot. of players. <laughs> get a couple. Of players. Yes. Get a couple of players at least. A lot. Lost songs. Um, the uh, the brothel was probably my favorite set. Yeah. Interior. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It reminded mm-hmm. me of the uh, the milk bar from Clockwork Orange. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually fun. really liked Godwin's lab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. It was so fun. It reminded me of uh, the Time Machine. Oh yeah. Okay. H. G. Wells. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like the uh, French observation room too. That was mm-hmm. fun. The surgery room. Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. In Paris. Yes. What was my favorite? I'm trying to think. Favorite set. I quite like the 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 rooms in the boat. It was very like yeah. SpongeBob SquarePants. It was, dude. Yeah. Uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Like on on like what's the one in water? Uh, Sweet. On Sweet deck. Life on deck. On deck. Oh, on it's deck, so dude. dumb. I hate that shit. But like, I, I liked it in the movie. Yeah. But I, I hate that that like what's it called was it was it Disney that did those yeah yeah, yeah yeah but it feels it felt very yeah it felt I like, hate that uh, what's his name Dan Schneider kind of shit you know yeah yeah but it felt you know what it felt very felt, much it was very Nickelodeon well actually you bring that up but y- y- it feels like a decaying the whole movie felt like to me a decaying Nickelodeon set. Mm. Ooh, that's hard, bro. Like, <laughs> like no, no, but like uh, that's you know, hard, bro. But. I, I don't know. I was, I was just thinking, like, That's it looked hard. like sets. And yeah. it just looked like everything was just kind of like. No, that goes hard. It goes hard. It in, looks like an iCarly set, you know? Imploding. Like, it just, like. You know, it becomes like it's kind of like rotting yeah. cheese. It felt like mold mm. on blue cheese as cities. But in done in such a fun way and such a fun, inviting. 
I was in. I Bro, felt okay, Hemingway. Let's go. You know, yeah, I, yeah. it was so much. There was so. I, again, this is so fucking stupid and cliched, but I love when the sets and the places they become or they are in become characters. Yeah, I love that. Give me more of whatever that is. I like when the movie is good. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but like you know hey, what I mean. Like, like it's like it's like with Batman. You know, it's like with the Batman twenty twenty two. That movie rules. But I love the is city. That, is that the one with Nirvana? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love the city. Or, yeah. or I like or like in Burton's Batman. The city oh, is love, the yeah, biggest yeah, oh, yeah. character nice. yeah, in the show in oh, the movie. Yeah. Like hello, when you have set, and this is I think now I understand where you guys are coming from with Dune, sand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's not just that sand, but it's like, you could have had that Denis Villeneuve, brutalist kind of like, square yeah. You could have looked like square sand, you know, make a whole thing out of it. But they Dude, didn't. it's Dune, man. Do literally anything. <laughs> and I, it would be better than doing nothing with yeah. the sand and with the yeah. desert. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, like they could have they're been, in they the desert though. They're here's my idea for Dune. Here's my, yeah. here's my pitch they're for Dune. Dune in the middle of Serengeti. Dune Messiah. Dune Messiah. They oh. get they get the they get the uh, the set they get the set director. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> they get the they get the set the t- the set designer from from uh, what's it called? Poor things. Poor things. Thank yeah. you. And you but you make them create Arrakis and Dune based on the Mario Kart map of Sandy <laughs> Sandy Dunes. Oh, that would rule. That would, that would right. fucking rule. That would be awesome. Dude. The- <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No. The, the fucking worm. <laughs> there you go. The, the worm is that fucking cactus guy that goes like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. Even the the Beetlejuice Dune set was better. Dude, the Beetlejuice Dune set was my first introduction to Dune. Yeah, that was way better than the actual Dune set. I mean, Beetlejuice is a better Dune movie than Dune. Yeah, Dune. literally. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like straight up, bro. Listen, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice coming September sixth, but. Yeah. Nothing's beating the original. I'm, I'm fucking sorry. Yeah, I'm worried about that one. I'm worried, bro. I feel like it's gonna be it's my birthday. I'm gonna go watch it for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll also sick invite, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> my birthday's on the seventh, by the way. Of what? September. Yeah, sick invite. You don't know his birthday? Oh well, well, well I, I probably did, bro. Well, well, uh, anyway, anyway, probably. You what was say? You just asked. I go. No, but yeah. <laughs> I digress. I really love when sets become characters, yes. and I love when like you can actually immerse yourself in the world. Mm-hmm. Now. Can we talk about the acting? Like, can we, can we before sure. we... No. No, thank you. <laughs> so, do you think... How many movies did you guys watch for the Oscars? Because she won the Oscar for this. How many, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what the Oscars were. Do you think this was deserved? Oppenheimer, I watched. Barbie, I watched. The Zone of Interest, I watched. Yeah. Moon Sky and You. Watched. Moon Sky and You. Best Picture. Dune. Dunk. Did Dune win anything? Dunk did did not was not nominated. For it wasn't nominated even. Well, it wasn't part of this Ooh. year. Wonka was mm. Wonka nominated for anything? No. Yeah, it was. What? It was. It was. It was. I think just the four I just mentioned are the only ones I've seen to be mm-hmm. honest. Okay. Barbie. The the. So do you Barbie think that this was her. deserved for best acting by a female lead? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Why? You know what he's gonna say, right? He's gonna bring up the the Flower Moon Bro, movie. Bro, I'm telling you right now. I haven't I, seen it. Look, look, look. I haven't I know, seen it. I know. I'm, I'm He's gonna talk you. about that chick and the fucking moon flower, moon, moon flowers and you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. The Scorsese movie, fucking good fella, good fellas part two, like good fellas part two, baby. Listen, yeah. listen. Blood Rudy and good fellas. Okay, so then we won't get into it as much. No, but I found, not. I found like her acting was good, but again, it's it's this whole like I'm dumb. You know, I can play dumb. Yeah, she's a beautiful retard. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, I thought her acting no, but was good, but like what I was saying before is that like the acting, like I don't care like what's I up said, with the Academy like... giving Gilbert Grape the Academy Award or Forrest Gump. Like, what's up with you being like, uh, I want sex. Yeah, you know? but then uh, what's his name? Fucking uh, Simple Jack from Tropic Thunder. Ben Stiller. He didn't win an Oscar. What's up with that? <laughs> he was nominated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, but I mean, the thing is, like I was saying before, is like, like I felt I was not really liking the too much the the acting in the beginning because yeah. it was yeah. too. Well, but I, for me, it becomes very strong at the end. But it felt and very like caricatural. The end is the part that's. Like, I just you know, found it felt very. Uh, hello, Godwin. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, oh, what was, was that? Though. Yeah, the, that the was nuts. Yeah, but that also, like also, this is such a hard <laughs> character to play. Right? Really. I think it's. I feel like yeah, I feel like I there's very few actors that can pull this off good. You know. I think I'm not sure. I agree with you, lads. I think it was just you know. 
Yeah. Mom, mom always mm-hmm. told me. Mm-hmm. But I think she does the transition yeah. so well. Yes, yeah. that's the thing. But that transition is very late in the game. Mm-hmm. No, it's just transition it slowly all yeah. the time. Ooh. Well, the yeah. first 30 is the same. Dude. Yeah, but and the second she's in Lisbon already, she's like... Super uh, different. Dipping her toes in... Mm-hmm. It's the transition, and yeah. it's also like... Like, also the dance scene. Yeah. Was that's perfect. Good. Yeah, that was super Dude, good. Dude, that like, dance was, scene rules. It does. Well, it's, but it's, it's it does. so much... That character in every way, like okay. I feel like if that dance scene was even a slight, like choreography was even slightly different, wouldn't it as good? Yeah, that was perfect. It was perfect. The thing you know, about like her acting is good though, but it, it's Mark Ruffalo. I find that all those scenes that kind of steal my attention. Oh yeah, yeah Mark yeah, Ruffalo yeah. is fucking yeah. ruled in this movie. Which it's is funny. Fun. Apparently, every day on set he was distraught with his performance. Oh really? Yeah. No, but you know what? He was second guessing himself. Yeah, exactly. Because he's so used to playing this fucking Marvel bullshit. Yeah. No, no, he's used to playing other stuff too. No, he said in an interview that like he was scared. He almost turned on the role because he was scared of playing something that he's not comfortable with. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying like he's done nothing else. I'm like, nah, he's no, but I'm no, saying no, no, he's, but he was he's... in that zone still. I think when right. they started doing poor things. Yeah, he's still in that zone of playing this like Hulk, you know, mm-hmm. straight Hollywood boy, straight Hollywood boy. Instead mm-hmm. of doing some really like yeah. otherworldly performance. Yeah, this was fucking different. outlandish. Yeah, from him, I read. Dude. I read that it was the accident too that was fucking him up a lot. The accident? The accent. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, yes. He was never satisfied. He never hey, thought he was Hey, Vinnie well. yeah. I thought it was fucking perfect. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it doesn't have to be close to any accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, every time he was on screen, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, yeah. no, he was awesome. Tired. But, like, yeah. I feel like, like, for me, how I view acting, <clears throat> as someone who's done acting in school, so some of my dad was an actor, is, for me, the best acting is when you can't tell they're acting, it's believable, you know? It's like, you know, you watch something and you're, and you're not like in your head, you're not thinking, oh, that's acting in your head. You're thinking that's a character, you know, mm. that's what I got from every, almost every character in this movie. I mean, obviously in this movie, it's very easy to jump to the idea of Emma Stone acting because the character is so outlandish and yeah. it's yeah. so dynamic and dramatic, you know, yeah. and also it's Emma Stone, also it's Emma Stone. Yeah. But it's so easy to fall in that line of like, oh, it's it's acting, you know. But I yeah. felt I thought it was very very believable, you know, especially for a concept thing. And it's like I wasn't th- like the thing is I wasn't thinking about her acting when I'm watching it, which see, makes I it good was, acting. See, I was though. I see. I found La La Land was a stronger performance because of the fact that I completely forgot that she was supposed to be acting. I just thought yeah, but she's such a normal. Well, there's a million people like the girl from La La Land, you know. No, yeah, no. But mm, normal roles are pretty hard to do too. They're hard to do. Yes, I agree. Like, like, but this is just as hard. Yes, in my opinion. but, 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 to do it right. There is this. I feel like in Lanthimos's work, there is this cynicism that he wants to bring out of the actors as well. There is a cynicism when you watch The Favorite. I'm sorry, Olivia Coleman. She's amazing, but she's a fucking idiot. The entire time in the movie mm-hmm. like there's that there's that whole like i think there's this theme that lanthimos wants to play with where the people in power are morons and the people in power have these quirks about them that just kind of make them a little off compared to the rest of the world the problem i have with bella baxter not the problem but the the issue that i have with the choice for the acting is that it is so you know, they, 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 it really comes off as like Forrest Gump. It really does to It's me. so much at stronger though, I find. Yeah, at the, the very beginning, beginning yeah. it gets stronger. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning, I'm like, oh, what is this? Like, I was like, is this okay? Are we getting canceled for watching this? Or I don't know. As someone know? who's taking care of kids that are like, just like that, I yeah. thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Well, I well, I, see, I take care of, like, I mean, I teach kids like this. But she wasn't. You don't teach kids that are flinging their shit around the floor. Well, yeah, and changing their diapers. But she well, wasn't. not changing diapers. She wasn't yeah, acting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, okay. She wasn't acting retarded. She was acting like an infant. Yeah. See, then I, I, was, I read that completely wrong. He says. Max calls her a retard. He says, "What a beautiful retard!" But she's—that's not what she's supposed to be. She's—it's because her brain is developing. She's an infant. She's a toddler in the body. Right. Of yeah, adult. it's like it's like what you pointed out with the walking. I don't like the walking, but then you're like, no, she's not supposed to be retarded. She's supposed to be. Yeah, she's a walking kid. like a toddler. Yes. She's yeah. walking like a toddler. She, yeah. You know? yeah, I guess. I guess with that lens, we're right. You're wrong. <laughs> sure. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, to me, I didn't. I mean, I can't comment on whether or not she deserves the Oscar because I haven't seen okay. every other movie. It's more. It's more like. It's more like I'm finding. I found like the Academy just giving it to her. It's 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 just it's funny to me because, again, there is there is this idea of like, oh, they're playing someone that they're not. Not okay. Well, that sounds stupid. They're acting. Yes. But like it's. <laughs> 
it's more like, you know, there is this lore and history of the Oscars giving awards to people for playing, like, people who don't necessarily have the same neurotypical assertiveness. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I find, like, when they get, I was like, really? Are they doing that again? Like, for me, it's just, I just found the performance was so good because it was believable. I feel like with a lot of performances mm-hmm. about someone who's special or someone who's like like that, it always comes up as not believable. I fucking hate Forrest Gump. Yeah, Forrest Gump, yeah. I don't... That's, it's not believable to me I that agree. he's like that. Same with... But Simple Jack is supposed to be like that, right? Yeah, well, Simple Jack. You know? <laughs> That's a very serious movie, though. Yeah. That's a very serious role. Listen, <laughs> Trump and Sons are fucking awesome, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's it's hard... I, I don't like, like it. I don't like dropping. Oh yeah. Are That's you fucking serious? Uh, let's let's go, let's not dwell on that though. Wait, we got to talk about Shrek after this though. But... Okay, I knew Laz was gonna say that. <laughs> but Chava Ch- 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 was fucking awesome, by the way. But <laughs> but no, but the thing is, I feel like with a subtle role that's not so dramatic, like you're saying, like the Lawline one. Yeah. It's 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 hard to do. Yeah. But it's easier to do it really well. I find. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like with roles like this, because it's so dramatic, you're going to see all the mistakes more. It's more going to, it's going to be more obvious when there's something wrong with it, I you know? See. So I feel like doing this kind of acting is easier for the, for the person to do than a subtle one. Like anyone could do this kind of acting. And, and like, you know, do dramatic kind of dynamic acting. Most, most people think that's what acting is, you know? And it's harder to do the, the subtle one in a more normal way. Yeah. But it's harder to do this one very good, where it's super believable. It's kind Whereas of like, the subtle one is easier to get to where it's super believable. Yeah. Like, the ceiling is higher. Right. No, no, the floor is higher for the subtle one, but the ceiling's lower. Mm-hmm. The floor is a lot lower with the with the dramatic, uh, yeah. you know, retard acting. <laughs> but That's the, the ceiling the is a lot higher, yeah. you know, well, to I, get it right, the, you know. It, I guess it's kind of like the difference between doing everything right and doing nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel I feel like it, this kind of like this the, the, her performance was like I'm not saying she deserves the Oscar for it, but it was fucking good. Like I thought the acting was fucking good. Yeah, yeah the acting's worth the movie. I mean, I think I think best actor, best lead is like for me always the hardest category hmm. to choose. Mm-hmm. I find yeah. she carried the movie for sure. I just think that it was just an interesting choice by the Academy yeah. once again to be like. Yes, yeah. funny person. You're the winner of the Oscar. You know what I mean? Has Has Emma Stone won an Oscar? She won an Oscar for La La Land. This was like recent, mm. like 2018. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you already gave it to her too. Yeah. Anyway, you guys want to move on to reviews? Um. Well, I have. Um. I. Um. Uh, hey. a very pretty retard. Mm-hmm. I just have a few one-liners that I thought was really nice. Funny that, I, I, that, that that of course is one of them, and then when. Uh, before that, when Max and Godwin first talk, mm-hmm. and he's like, I read your paper, and he's like, oh, you liked it. And he's like, you show signs of a conventional mind trying very hard to scratch mediocrity. Yeah, <laughs> and Max goes, oh, thank you. <laughs> so funny. No, no, dude, Godwin has a hilarious lines in this movie. Yeah, yeah he's There's one where, um, where he's like, uh, Max, I forgot what it was, but Max was like complimenting him on his like essay. He's like, I don't need you to compliment me. I know how good it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, um, no, it's, it's his, he, he makes a joke and, and he he asks him if that's what he means. He's like, don't explain. It's my joke. Don't explain it to me. I know what it means. <laughs> so, like, or like, there's one where it's um, he's talking about God and he's like, are you referring to me or like uh, or like yeah. uh, a being? You know, he's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is, this is. he's like, okay, <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, another quote I had jotted down was, we never lived outside God's house to the point of our, our imagery of the Garden of Eden. Yeah. That played into that. Um, See, that, again, is very on the nose. You know yes. What I mean? Yeah. And even um, Miss Swiney's uh, monologue, her perspective of life saying, experience everything, this is what makes us whole. Mm-hmm. That was a better also... Barbie speech than the one we got. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. No, and then no, no, no. I also liked. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I took heroin for the pain, amphetamines to bring me up, and cocaine because I'm partial to cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was yeah. funny. That was a nice reference to Scorsese's film. Oh, was it? Yes. Yes, Wolf of Wall Street, where he's like, I take quaaludes to wake oh, me up, yeah. orange juice to simmer me down, blah, blah, blah. 
And quaaludes and cocaine because it's awesome. You know? <laughs> yeah. They're like just after that when the general walks in mm-hmm. and Duncan is behind him and he yells about Godwin. He's like, he, he's so evil that he's deteriorating. And Max is like, he has cancer, you fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's just like... Oh. Um, yeah, geez, <laughs> Actually, we didn't talk about that part of the movie very much. The ending mm-hmm. with um, Alfie. Yeah, yeah the... Alfie. That's I didn't it. really like that part. I felt like that car part was kind of breaking this kind of return to Gotham yeah, a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's like... And it was kind of short, and it was like mm-hmm. quick, you know, and it was kind of like they did it to get it out of the way, you Definitely know? my least favorite, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, like, I like the... The reference to a, a worm tongue and saw and Saruman when Alfie walks in with Duncan behind him mm-hmm. and he's curled up behind him in his yeah, ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or no, it's not. It's that's not. It's worm tongue and uh, the king of yeah. Rohan. Yeah, king of Rohan. What's the king of Rohan called again? Theoden. Yeah, Theoden. 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 Last time. Yeah, yeah we, we, know, we literally <laughs> talked about yeah. this last week. There's a lot of there's a lot of worm tongue references lately. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, like, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm a sucker for adding uh, Lord of the Rings reference. Talk that we love Lord of the Rings. Rule. Way. Best trilogy ever made. I also didn't like the Alfie chapter. Yeah, I thought it, I just thought it was short and kind of like too, too quick. You know, it's like yeah. it felt rushed. It felt like they did it to get it out of the way. But it's another one of those things where I felt like they were kind of letting the uh, Delia Baxter's character decide what she yeah. does. Because yeah, I feel like they wouldn't have liked that Alfie chapter to exist. But I felt like they put themselves in her shoes and been like, if he showed up to her wedding, what would she do? Yeah. And that is what she would do? Yeah. So then they did that part. It just felt know? like more of the same, though, I found. And yeah. like, the, I found yeah. the Paris chapter, like, so long compared to Alexandria or Lisbon. Alexandria yeah. was super short. Yeah, I was already out of it almost yeah. halfway through Paris. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, there's another 40 minutes of this brothel, you know, more weird guys coming in. And then we have another chapter after that, a yeah. moment with her husband. It was too, too too long for me. Like, yeah. that, that was off pace. There's a deleted scene from Paris mm-hmm. where uh, a doctor comes in and gives a, a couple of the prostitutes an abortion. Mm, okay. Oh. Mm. Oh. Just a fun fact. Nice. He's like smoking a dart into their pussy while he's Ooh. doing it. Oh hell yeah! It's quite, a, it's quite a raunchy scene, but oh shit! It was it was cut from the. Film. Don't yeah. But so I guess Lanthimos also was he was spending too much time there. I guess. Yeah, it's a bit long. Yeah. But um, I didn't find it. That long. Did mm-hmm. we lose audio? Yeah, no, it was audio like, just died. Should we, should yeah, we let's uh, do a little cut here? Break here. Switch the batteries. Did it just just die? I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, where did we leave off, or should we just move on? Move on. Um, so the last thing I, I liked, so we, we mentioned the chapter cards and the title card earlier. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. But the, the actual specific imagery of the title cards. Oh, it was very interesting. I found very cool. So the, the poor things... Title card, beating heart, life begins. Mm-hmm. Right, Lisbon. It's Bella riding a fish. Right, it's, yeah. it's the hero going on, starting her adventure. The ship was her walking on a hand with like red blood cells in the yeah. back. So I guess that was like, I don't know. That one, that one stumped me. I'll have to that find imagery. Um, uh, Alexandria floating bubble. That's. Harry bursting her bubble, right, exposing her to the to the plight of, of the real world. Uh, Paris uh, was her floating on a rock out at sea, so it's it's her being actually on her own for the first time. And then the return to London is her walking on a bridge of eyes, right? It's her the hero's return mm-hmm. with fresh eyes after after I having. I think maybe the hand might be let go. Maybe you know, yeah. a release. Yeah. From control. Yeah, she, yeah. Mm-hmm. the red blood cells could just be a. a, a Anger, emotion, violence. Yeah. Those all happen in the book. Sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most think it's like something with the heart. You're being led with your heart. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Menstruation. So that, I just wanted to mention that that's, I liked the, uh, I liked all that. Yeah, that's cool. No, I liked a lot. I, I think the title card's one of my favorite parts of the yeah, movie. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't pay too much attention to them the first, my first viewing, apart from these are cool. But the second time I, I, I tried to, to jot down the imagery and actually analyze it. So mm-hmm. just want to run that by you guys. Yeah, they're cool. Favorite shots? Sure. Oh, fuck. Favorite shots? Last favorite shot? Favorite yeah, shot? Favorite scene? Favorite I whatever? Few, I got a few. So the, the garden being at the end. Yeah. I like that. Um, I like the beginning when we're introduced to Godwin. There's the, uh, what's it called? The fish eye. Fish eye. Love that. Um, and then when she's walking into Lisbon for the first time, and you just see like the pan out of the mm-hmm. 
the tramway mm. or the weird Susie and architecture. That's it. That's it for me. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mine, I think it was in one of the first color sections when Godwin is telling Max about how he uh, did the surgery oh, on yeah. Bella. And it's a wide shot that Dolly's in and he's sitting at his desk and there's like a pig's corpse hanging on the side and then kind of a nurse on the other side. I have time codes and stuff if you want for that. I thought that was very fun. That almost reminded me of like fucking, uh, I don't know, some kind of like death metal album or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, something fun like that. Very um, Francis Bacon in that film. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Cool. Uh, the second thing I've jotted down here was uh, about half an hour into the movie, and it's uh, she's still in Godwin's house, and it's uh, Bella, Max, and Godwin all sitting at the table, and it's a super wide dolly down the table, black and white, mm-hmm. with like these harsh, um, like I don't know what kind of light, fluorescent tube right. lights on mm-hmm. top, super contrast, black, white, very sharp in your face. I thought that was very well done, those two. I didn't know. I really like. Um... Fuck, there's a lot of shots in this movie. I like a lot of the close-ups, especially in black and white, where there's like that spinning Uzumaki shit in the back. Mm-hmm. I love that shit. Um, <clears throat> I love the dance scene a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm. My favorite shot, though, I really don't know. There's a lot of good portrait shots in this movie. Yeah. I think maybe the, the when she starts dancing, the dolly back. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Um, it's just like the overall like it's more of like my favorite what's my favorite lens and they use in this yeah, fucking yeah. movie you know mm. fish eye yeah uh, there's one in particular on the boat where where uh Duncan kind of walks up on her reading and then he throws the book yes that fish eye that fish eye is very cool is one of my favorites too not just the, the fish eye but the as he approaches the wide yeah with this like landscape it's super sick you know yeah it's probably it, you know? Yeah. I had that, that fisheye, too, when he throws the book with, like, the umbrella with uh, Bella and Duncan on one side, mm-hmm. yeah. and then the old woman and Harry on the other side, and it's, like, the two worlds Bella's in, and it's, you know, that's the breaking point of her choosing what yeah. world she wants to spend more time in. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of fisheyes, though. Yeah. Every fisheye shot was fucking so sick. Even mm-hmm. the first one, when she's playing yeah. piano with her feet, too. Yeah. That was sick. There's a really cool one too where she's in Lisbon eating at eating at like the, the street food stand. And it was like sick, you know? Yeah. But I, I mean honestly I think the title card the chapter cards are they're very cool. are yeah. I fucking love them. You know, the, I, I that, that's so what sick. I was gonna say. I forgot that one. Yeah. But yeah, I like the t- I think the title cards are my favorite too. Yeah. I, I, I was literally thinking about the title cards before I was we were doing the favorite shots and I completely forgot about them. Yeah. But and, yeah, those are probably yeah. my favorite too. I think especially the London one with the the She's walking on the bridge with the eyeballs. I yeah. love it. Just a fucking cool image. Yeah. Cool paintings. Yeah. So letterbox. Let's do it. Yeah, I, didn't, I forgot my phone in my room. Slam through some reviews. Like I said, uh, I don't have any prepped, so we might get some... We might we might read some stinkers today. <laughs> Rut row. You know? <laughs> Rut row. We'll sort by uh, lowest rating first. Let's see, let's see what people hate about this movie. This feels like a fetish film in the worst possible way, says Flip. Flip's favorite movies. Get ready, guys. Mm -hmm. The Muppets Take Manhattan. (laughs) (laughs) The Royal Tenenbaums. Gaga, five foot two. And Frank. What'd she call me? Have you guys seen Frank? The movie with the guy who wears a yeah that fake... movie. The movie rules. This movie actually does rule. Okay. So this guy gave four things a ten out of ten. Uh, he gave it half a star. Wow. He said this feels like a fetish film in the worst possible way. Here are some notes I took. At 7, he timestamped them. So 7.30, the R slur. It's not a slur. Retard. It's just a word. The R slur is dropped. 20, 25 minutes. That makes it a bad... Okay. 25 minutes, all the masturbation stuff. 45 minutes, I was just getting bored. 55 minutes, what the fuck is happening? One hour, wait, what? One hour and three minutes, how did this win a costume design? Oh, okay. What? Yeah, no, what? It says these fits are trash. Oh, God. Uh, they're supposed to be one. They're also sick. Yeah, there was. I thought this was like the coolest costume movie I've seen in a long fucking yeah. time. He tapped out at, at an hour 46. 
tapped out an hour forty six, so he didn't even okay. finish it. Yeah, well, I mean, these are stupid. He doesn't like the beating yeah. off and the fucking. I don't know. Yeah. Come on. Who Tom's, Tom's watching Infinity Pool. See how he thinks. Fucking <laughs> ten minutes. Infinity Pool. Infinity Pool. Line. Yeah, Her favorite movies are Fight Club, Seven, Memento, and Midsummer. Who is this Reddit user, bro? <laughs> yeah. A big time Reddit user right there. She's obsessed with Brad Pitt and David Fincher. Oh, you don't say. Oh, so is she going to beat up her children and Angelina Jolie as well? Or? <laughs> she says, half a star for poor things. Feminism is when a child has a bunch of sex with old men because her brain was put into her dead mother's body. Real. Before <laughs> before knowing That's anything about the plot, Not I true. expected to love this one. And to be fair, the set and costume design is insane. But how is everyone chill about someone who is mentally a child prostituting herself and calling it a journey of finding herself? Yes, Bella does age a bit throughout her journey, but she is very clearly yeah. still a teen at the end. No, she's not. I think she's a very clearly a mature adult. Mm-hmm. She's like a grandmother at the end of this movie. I oh. want your love to be practical, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. We're teens these days. We're teenagers yeah, these teenagers days. these days. Boring uh, a clip. Let me watch some Family Guy moments. <laughs> <laughs> How many people approved of this sick male fantasy of sexual liberation, liberation and feminism? Were there not any women present? I love Emma Stone, but the fact that she accepted this role is appalling. To think the Oscars, um, that biggest recognition in the industry, decided to highlight this absolute foolish and disgusting film is laughable. Wait, wait, wait. Can I, can I, can I read this one? Can I read this one? Yeah. Can I just read it again? There's a, just there's one paragraph left. Just, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> How many people have heard of this sick male fantasy? I love Emma Stone. The fact she said this role is appalling. The film is just laughable. Laughable. <laughs> it sounded very much like a Trump tweet. You know? Good job, oh, Ryan. Shit. I have way too many thoughts about these two hours. Hold uh, up, hold up. Let's let's get the David David Lynch in here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to get the Donald Trump, we're going to get the David Lynch. Can you cite read that David last Lynch. paragraph as David Lynch, dude? I have way too many thoughts about these two hours that set back female liberation for about 40 years. But I'm just done wasting another second on this ridiculous piece of media, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one clip of David Lynch. Be like, who gives a fucking shit how long a scene? Is? I love that. Dude. <laughs> no, dude, he's the best. He's the best part of the Steven Spielberg cinematic universe in the Fablemans, dude. He's playing John Ford. He's John oh, Ford oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Fablemans. It's awesome. He's in there for two minutes. Amber, whose favorite movies are The Thing, Rear Window, Rear Window, Window. Inherent Vice, and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Wow. Okay, wait. Inherent Vice. So the pa- the last two reviews, mm-hmm. the guys t- both in their top fours. We're indicative that I thought they were going to fucking love this movie. Yeah. So what's yeah, the fucking guy think? Half a star. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had to turn this movie off. Oh. This woman has the brain of a literal baby. And Okay, so all of these people are upset about the pedophilia. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I don't think Pseudo pedophilia. Yeah. A movie about a girl, a movie about a baby, a movie about... Yeah, okay, so mm-hmm. we get it. Let's see, let's see some fivers. Yeah, let's see some fiver. Let's see can can I do my David Lynch fiver? Yeah, here. <laughs> I gave him a review written in time. <laughs> That's the fucking thing you showed me. <laughs> it's in fucking time, bro. I can't. Wait, well, man, only God I, forgives. I was literally like. <laughs> bro, what the fuck? <laughs> it's in Senegalese, bro. <laughs> Okay, wait, I gotta, I gotta channel the David, because Laz did a fucking good David Lynch just now. I gotta channel it, bro. Okay, so this review's by, well, I'm not, I'll, I'll read the review in the Lynch, yeah. but I'm gonna do everything else in the, so it's by, um, a Larissa Gassick. Larissa Gassick. Yeah. <laughs> favorite, only two favorite movies, Seven and Inception. A lot of mm. people like Seven today. Yeah, a lot of yeah. dumbasses. <laughs> You don't like seven? What's in the box? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> the review actually does start with wow. Wow! <laughs> okay, fuck. <laughs> wow! Finally watched it. I don't know what to expect, as I didn't really want to see anything before watching 
it. <laughs> Emma Stone deserves every award she has received. Mark Ruffalo <laughs> stunned me. He was amazing. Um, amazing. <laughs> Willem Dafoe? Amazing. <laughs> Catherine Hunter? Amazing. Amazing. Oh. Who's Catherine Hunter? Oh, fucking no. <laughs> really liked Gerard Ca- Car Mitchell as well. Oh, really? The colors yeah. were stunning. The sound as well. It really felt like the background noises were there with us in the room. Mm. Not just on screen. Mm. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Overall... A great movie. That was that that a great movie. Do it again. A great movie. That was perfect. <laughs> Five stars. There you go. Five stars. <laughs> I watched a lot of this fucking guy's weather reports. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> cool. My favorite's the one where he holds out the jar. He's like, "I'm holding a jar. I painted it black." <laughs> um. One last one from Kitty Smith. Favorite movies. Hold up. Write in the comments. Whose who's Lynch impression was better? Laz or mine? You decide. I don't care. It's all, it's all good. Though. It's not a competition. I'm just saying. If you guys have an opinion about that, say it. K- Kitty Smith's favorite movies. VHS. Mm, wow. Perfume. The Ooh. Story of a Murderer. Ooh. And I read the book, too, when I was high school. Mobius. Okay. Oh. So this person... I, actually, I'm going to guess. Half Star. Five just stars. because everyone else that has that fucking kind five of stars, five stars. okay, okay, so that, yeah, that, that's a five. That that, that that's that guy. That, that, <laughs> sorry. Uh, somewhere between the Fifth Element and Wetlands. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the trail gives the impression that we will be revisiting the born sexy trope. Watch a man create the woman of his dreams. Instead, we get to experience the sensation of seeing things new and with a scientific, non-judgmental eye. It's rare to see a woman's perspective of new world exploration and the addition of different elements of social constraints pulling her to conform, but being ignored just add to the commentary. Then she included a, 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 a too long, didn't read. I thought it was going to be male gaze masturbation fantasy, but instead it was female sexual revolution. Plus it was pretty. That was a horrible yeah, David Lynch yeah. impression. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of that trope before. Born sex. Born sex. I don't know either. Also a stinky well, review. Clearly you're not born with it. I guess. Hey, no. No. Born ugly fuck. <laughs> Most of these reviews are not in English, if I'm going to be honest. Mm. A, quick, a, a, a quickie? No. Nope. A quickie? Fine. No thanks. Not this one. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. From JJ1234. Favorite movies, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Mm. American Shout Psycho, out Ezra Miller, bro. New Moon, and the Grand Budapest Hotel. Five mm. stars. This is my Barbie. <laughs> that's not a good thing to start a review with. Bro. That's the whole review. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, that's like my review of Joker, which is like this is my Black Panther. Dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Shrek. Part, Shrek two. <laughs> All right. So, what do you guys think? Out of ten, I thought, I thought it was Barbie, but for girls that was. Wait, what did I rate it on Letterbox? What did I put it? Oh, let me check. Or, I don't remember oh, right now. Julia, what would you think? I think it was four, four on five. Uh, you gave it five on five on Letterbox. Yeah, you, you had to. You, you texted me after you yeah, watched five it. on five. Yeah, yeah no, I remember this now. Yeah, no, five on five. I just there's so many questions I have about the movie, and I think that still warrants a five on five. Mm-hmm. Like you said. Technically, holy, this is so awesome. Yeah. Give me more movies like this. Different stories, different ways. Use tech. Anyone who's out there, make movies, use different cameras. Be weird with it. Get fun. Be happy. Get creative. Life's a party. You're all invited. Come on, join the fun. (coughs) Join the club. Don't worry about what camera you buy. Buy anything. Make anything you want. The world's your oyster. You deserve to be. You're welcomed here. Believe in the Yorgos Lothmos that believes in you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, but on 10, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, see, that's, five being that's the thing, is that it's weird. On Letterboxd, it's out of five, right? So, like, yeah. five on five. On 10, mm-hmm. eight and a half. 
No. Okay, that's very yeah, good. Though. That's yeah. me personally. Yeah. Eight and a half. I'm thinking more strongly. Eight and a half. Did, wait, did you did yeah. you watch it a second time? No, I only saw it okay. one time. So I mm. I enjoy watching things more. Than <laughs> getting my whole thing. With it. It's it's. I find it was very very fun. You know, there's just a lot. There's just a lot. I mean, I think there could have been some things that could have been tweaked. I think like character development in some cases for me and for Max. But yeah, eight and a half. I mean, me. Uh, I don't care if the movie's full pro pedophilia, full anything. I'm. You can, you know, disassociate the oh, message what? from the tech, you yeah, know, of what's it's... happening. Jeez. And like the... <laughs> the pro <pedophilia>. stuff. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. for, for fact, you know? Jesus but like Christ. the style and Ugh. the craft of the movie, I think it outweighs any kind of negativity you can throw on it itself. Right. <laughs> I'm going to give it a, a proper eight for mm. it overall. I, I thought it was directed fantastic. The score was great. The acting was great. <laughs> That's what the movie is. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Yes or no? Just a solid nine. Nine. <laughs> no further <laughs> comment. Nine. Um, I think the first time I watched it, it was like a nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Second wow. viewing, eight and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, eight and a half. No, like, I mean, I'm going off my uh, grading scale I explained last week. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So Not that's an average eight and a half then? Average eight and a half. How that more things sense. by Yorgos Lanthimos. Yeah, that sounds Enjoyed good it, to that's me. That's an eight and a half. Also. Thank you, George. Yeah. I think it did deserve best set, best music, best costume, and best directing, and best cinematography. <clears throat> yes. So all of them. All of them. Did it deserve best female lead? I don't know. I don't know. But it definitely deserved the others. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it won all of those, but for yeah. best adapted screenplay. Best cinematography was um, Oppenheimer. Yeah. I think this that makes be. sense, though. I don't know. I find that ridiculous. I don't know. <laughs> I thought Oppenheimer stunk, yeah. dude. I don't know. Compared to a movie like this, where stuff is actually moving. Yeah. True, yeah. You know? Yeah, I think this was this this was a this is top tier. This is this is one for the history books. I'm really glad that there's a lot more auteurs coming out recently. Like I yeah. don't know. We've been watching a few movies now. Yeah. I feel like there's a yeah. new need for that regardless of what we feel. It's like about a resurgence Dune, almost. There's a re- regardless of what you guys felt about Dune compared to what I did. I just appreciate that people are going out now. People are well, going out. I think I think Dude was a cash grab, you know. I mean, to an I extent. It, I mean, uh, it's also a passion project for Denny. Yeah, but I feel like Denis has more style than that. Sure, normally. but the point mm-hmm. is, but is Denis? You know, I trust Denis. It's not some hack. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's. I'm, I'm, I'm more. I'm. I'm. I'm so happy that we're kind of back. Well, it's like I it's, think there's a new golden age that's gonna happen. I, I agree yeah, because, I and I feel like it's being is this resurgence with yeah. Weird surrealist movies. Oh hell yeah, dude! Bo's afraid. What the fuck was that? Yeah, that was we the were, right. We that were, was the regular day in Montreal, baby. We were supposed to review Bo's Afraid, by the way, for anyone watching, but we left the theater and we started recording with nothing to fucking say. <laughs> that's why. That's how weird a fucking movie is. The mythical, unreviewable yeah. movie. I think I still have some recording of that. Yeah, yeah you, it's probably just us be like. Well, right. well uh, <laughs> no. yeah. it's, just, yeah. it's just resurgence of kind of surreal, mm. weird movies. And I Can feel the like, hat coming soon. I feel like the big four is <laughs> Veneuve, but that's even not that's not even as like surrealist weird. That's like just more like a good movie. Maybe. No, yeah, very competent, but style like auteur, yes. auteur. yeah, <laughs> Robert Eggers, yeah, might be in the best one of the of Ari Aster, Ari Aster, yeah. and the the Red boy Gary. the boy from the Greek bro. Lanthimos. Bro, get Lantimos. into the Greek, dude. Gr- Gerwig has to do a fucking weird ass movie before she gets into that tier. Mm. Like a really like a boat. Like she has to go. Okay, let me let me let me, let me rephrase. It doesn't need to be weird. Point is, people are finally coming out and supporting people with voices. No, yeah. no, I'm saying for my thing though. Yeah, no, I know, but like you know what I mean. Like people are finally finding the vo- new voices to share. Yeah. New things to say. Yeah. Where I think 2025 is going to be the year of the gold, new golden age. Of, of Hopefully, we don't yeah. get bombed out of the wazoo. You didn't put cr- fucking Brandon Cronenberg on that list, dude. Come on, man. No, 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 no. He's our nah, boy. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, nah. he's not there yet. We're gonna get him on the fucking nah, podcast nah. one day. No, no, he's not there yet. That would be pretty sweet. We got him. His movies aren't good enough to be on that tier yet. Right. Turn it off. Yeah, we'll leave it. Leave yeah. it. Turn it off. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next. Yeah, he has like one. Thank you. Or right? Follow us everywhere you want to follow us. Podcast, Spotify, wherever the fuck. Instagram, YouTube, Instagram. Merch drop coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Shit is fucking hard as fuck. The new oh. merch drop. You're gonna love that oh. shit. Follow Laz M31 Creative or uh, Laz. Plug yourself. L A Z R dot ninety eight private insta. If you want to follow, maybe I'll accept you. Who knows? Thanks so much for having me.
Oh, I know this shit I'm talking about.